We don't know. Yeah. We, we, we hide well, for you. The problem with me is it's like when you multiply anything with naught. You do it to the power yeah, of Exactly. Well, still... Nothing ever happens. Yeah, mm. okay, shame. And, I, and I'm a fat little ugly fella, like, like Reg Varney. <laughs> Well, there's lots of people there you don't like, and you sort of, you could go up to afterwards and almost, like, metaphorically flip the bird. What's that mean? Last week, yeah, flip the bird. You dirty, no. Middle finger. And I, and see, I married Steve Single. No, what are you talking about? And there are lots of people there. I thought it was a euphemism. Who you haven't got on with in the past, and then they're all being really nice to you. What am talking about? We get on with everyone, don't we? What does flip the bird mean? What does flip the bird you got that little hipster thing. The yeah, finger. Give me yeah, the finger. Give me the finger. Yeah, but I thought there was a dirty metaphor. No. You're always thinking this. Don't bring me down to your level till at least five minutes. <laughs> right. uh, coming up after the road, we've got Steve and Ricky and lovely Claire. We're driving their desk. Hello. Right, Claire. Hello. Don't bend over like that, Claire. Put a, put a longer top on or something. You're right, boys. You're, you're very studious there. We are. We're working hard on the show. Just working out what we're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> What order? I love um, the way you even live the pretense. Some, what about some Foo Fighters mixed with the strokes, Ricky? I wouldn't mind a bit of strokes or no order. What should we kick in with? Uh, undecided yet, Rick. Probably got some ads to, uh, to help us decide. That some dilemma, advertising. that dilemma will be revealed in uh, just under four minutes. Stick around. Merry Christmas, Tim. New Order and Crystal on XFM 104.9. Now listen to Ricky Gervais, so obviously. With Steve Merchant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they like to know. They like to know if I'm here. They don't like to know. The fans do. Yeah. Um. Now, that was one of my favourite singles of the year. Yeah, it's a good song. And that's what we're going to be doing in this programme. We are going to be playing some of our favourite songs from the year, Rick. That's absolutely true. We're also going to be playing some songs that maybe we don't like. Exactly. Just for the hell of it. Yeah, because we're crazy guys. Yeah. We never know what's going to happen next. No, no. We don't. Uh, guess we, who's pressing the buttons, We genuinely right? don't. <laughs> well, you know who's pressing the buttons. You can see it, but that's the audience we don't. don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> it's Sturgis. We've got Sturgis in. Claire Sturgis. Oh. XFM's Claire Sturgis. Yeah. Yeah. She stayed off it for just a day. She's yeah. not, no, no, she's, she's just... She's clean for a day. You're methadone or <laughs> what you want? No, no, I'm clean now. You can actually clean, eh? Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Well done. Congratulations, well done. yeah. For great, clean yeah. for Christmas. Oh. That's beautiful. You're still thieving though, aren't you? You're still <laughs> the thieving. Just Can't lose the thieving. It, but at least it, the money now goes on like, you know, 40 Benson as opposed to a little five pound start It's lovely. Yeah. Oh, it's sweet. Right, okay. It's nice it to see a little, nice. little miracle for Christmas, yeah. Rick. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's lovely, yeah. Yeah, oh. I'm already in the Christmas mood. Are you oh. in the Christmas mood? I, I, the thing is, right, what she's still got left over from it, and the, the, these are the scars and the reminders of your smackhead thieving day. <laughs> Are those little homemade tattoos on her face? Exactly. That exactly. She did with a pin. Yeah, she looks some, like seal. And some, yeah, and some quink. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but no. Merry Christmas to you, Claire. Yeah. Merry yeah. Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Christmas. You're still living in the projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's, the, yeah. here's one of those little. She's miracles. still keeping it real. She's it's like wonderful. Little tiny Tim. I tell you what, she's she's a bit like Jesus Christ. <laughs> in a way, yeah, yeah. In That's way. blasphemous. Please play a record. Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Linkin Park and one of their songs. Gervais, quick, come on, mate. He's got. He's coming back from the kitchen with a couple of cups of tea. It's like he's won an award. He doesn't care now. I'll turn up if I want to. Maybe we should do a twin spin, Sturgis. Do you want another yeah, record? Yeah, play something. Okay. Play something. Uh, here you are then. Paul Weller, the changing man, the Absolutely. mod father. That's true enough, as they call him. Absolutely. See now, you, uh, you told the listeners that I was just too big to be here because I'd won some award. Yes. I was actually making the tea for all of us, wasn't I? It's awful. This that's tea. The, that's not the point. I shouldn't be making tea, a man, for my <laughs> position. And, yeah, You're right. You shouldn't be making tea. It's just awful. Uh, what? How do you? What, how do you actually go about the tea? You understand how a cup of tea is made? But uh, I, I, you know I, you've got to put a tea bag in there. No, but uh, this is weird, right? Because I actually can't make a good cup of tea or coffee, and it's strange. It must, must be something metaphysical. I put all the right ingredients in, just like everyone else does, and I boil the cat and everything. But people do go that. This Can is I tell you where you're going wrong? Go on, laziness. Why? Because you literally don't leave the tea bag in long enough. You literally dunk it in there. And throw it away. I was trying to get back in time because no, I got you a show. No, you were. I saw you talking with Dermot O'Diddley, so don't give me that. And I've been around to your house before. There's been times, Sturgis, when he, I've tasted the tea and it tastes like washing up liquid. And I said, what happened? And he went, there were some bubbles in there, yeah. Well, Could I you not have rinsed out with some water for a snack? Well, don't, well yeah, but I, I resent having to make tea. Yeah, but don't teach me a lesson. You, like, don't offer someone a cup of tea and then think, I'll teach them a lesson. They won't be asking for tea again. <laughs> when they usually were. <laughs> but... Yeah. I had to go and get an extra tea bag and dunk it in here. It's ludicrous. I know. It's mad, isn't it's it? It's pathetic. Anyway, but it's Christmas. Let's not let's not disrespect let's each not, other. Let's no. be cheery. Yeah. Can I tell Sturgis what you got your family for Christmas last year? I just remembered <laughs> oh, when I was outside. Please, please. It was a joy. Because G Gervais is a, is a generous man and he's a thoughtful man and he's got a lot of brothers and sisters and a lot of n nephews and, and uh, nieces and stuff. Well, I've got and about 20 people to yeah, get Yeah, you've got a lot of So, he's, you know, it's a tricky business. That's why I think, was it, you got him £200 worth of lottery scratch cards? <laughs> I'm, 
I, I, I had about a minute. I was getting a lift down to Reading, and uh, it was my mate Jimmy. And uh, I went, hold oh, no, on, I just got to get uh, the presents. And I just I ran into the Seven Eleven, obviously, <laughs> and got to do this with the scratch cards. That's amazing. <laughs> it's such a working class Jippo <laughs> gift, isn't it? But did any of them work? Anyone win it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people were down. That was a present. Hard luck. <laughs> that, that's the risk you take when you accept this present. Some people were up seventy pounds. But so they had a mind, great Christmas. Just bear in mind that there's like some children who are like seven or eight, you know, <laughs> scratching off scratch cards. They gotta be eighteen to claim them. <laughs> <laughs> and just the rest of your family sort of, I can imagine, just wrestling them off. You, know, you can't claim it anyway. Uh, no, it's, have I won? No. Mm. No, you haven't. Yeah. No. But I've, oh, got, look, I've got three, three dumbbells. three the same. You don't get anything for that. <laughs> Not in this game. <laughs> Unlucky. Are you going to do that again this year? Maybe, yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Mercury Rev, the dark is rising. That sounds like a bit like a tribute to Neil Young. Beautiful. Uh, I thought it was wonderful. It was lovely. Yeah. lovely. No, we're we're, we're going to play some lovely records oh, today. some beautiful songs today. Steve. All right. That, that's true. What did you call me then? Steve. <laughs> did you call me something else before? I didn't no. hear. I thought maybe you'd, you'd no. called me, I don't know, Jonathan or something. <gasps> no, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I, did, I didn't hear. I got paranoid. <laughs> um, uh, Christmas. We were talking about Christmas. Yeah. Um, yeah. gifts. What's wrong now? <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> what? Were you having a go at me because I went on John's Rosh show? No, no, no. I thought you'd said something. You'd said my name by mistake. You'd said someone else's name when you are talking to me. Oh, and right. I, But I didn't hear that. So when I heard you just okay. go, Steve, I thought you were correcting a mistake you hadn't made. No. No, exactly. No, no. Oh, okay. All right. You see? Blunder. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call me? <laughs> Fatty. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, we're talking about Christmas, yes, yeah. Yes. Well, it is Christmas, it's just isn't it? Because it, it's you... the right time of year to talk about it, to be honest. It's topical. <laughs> so let's carry on. Go on, shoot. Well, I just wondered if your Christmas uh, gift buying had always been as uh, thoughtful as it is. <laughs> oh, well, no, that was, see, that was actually, even though it was thought pretty lazy and thoughtless, it was quite generous in a sense, yes, the financial. Sure. But I remember, oh, no, oh, God. Now, even though I sort of come from a working class, working class family, and my dad was, um, you know, a labourer, and my mum was like a housewife, but I was spoiled at Christmas. I, you know, I didn't have like pocket money or, or gifts and that, but, you know, she'd get out of a catalogue and pay for it for the rest of the year, so I did have great presents. Yeah. And because I had older brothers and sisters, they were earning, so I had good presents. And it was okay for me to, you know, give them nothing or do a card or something rubbish. But then I remember one year when I just suddenly realised I was too old to be doing this. It was like, it was like, you know, in Jaws, when it pulls focus, yeah, and you yeah, go, oh yeah. my God, and I just realised, that's the worst present you've ever, <laughs> it was, I think it was about 12 or 13, and I remember it now. My sister had got me a Cat Stevens album, Great. I think a, uh, a birdhouse, uh, and like a quiz book yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. and it was my turn to give her a present, and it was a bottle of shampoo that I'd found in the bathroom and wrapped up. <laughs> a big jumbo, one of those Tesco's, you know. Had it not already that, been used? No, I don't think so. My mum had bought it, like, you know. You just top, topped it up with water, wrapped it up. No, I just, no, I just gave it to her and she went, oh, thanks. I thought, <laughs> oh, outrageous. God, that's rubbish. That's really it's bad. It's rubbish, isn't it? That's really bad. I know, yeah. I remember one year, um, I really wanted a Scalectrix. I was going, I want Scalectrix. And my mum was going, no, you'll just get bored of it. I know what you're like, you'll get yeah. bored of it and we'll have spent all that money and you'll be bored. I was going, no, I won't. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'll play with it forever. And, I said, mm. and she was going, no, you won't, you won't. And I was going, I will, I love it. And so she bought me Scalectrix and I unwrapped it. And I was using it, I was using it, I was bored instantly. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't tell her, I pretended I loved it. And she'd like, I'd always be playing it monotonously, hating it. I know. God, I'm loving this, Mama. It's absolutely brilliant. You were wrong. You were so wrong. I'm loving it. I know. I, 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 things with Sky Electrics, I, I think it was great at the time, but, yeah, um, I think it was an XFM party, actually, years ago when they got Sky Electrics, and like loads of us think, oh yeah, I used to love it. Rubbish. Yeah, really It's, rubbish. it's tiny. Yeah. It's about two foot long. Yeah. You'll, you go, oh, put it back, put it back on, yeah. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> there exactly. you go. Oh. Keep, put it back on. Exactly. You want, it, you want it to at least kind of change into a robot, or yeah. kind of come off and just drive around the course. Kitchen. These days, it's all virtual, Steve. <laughs> That's true. Isn't it? In your mind. Well, we all take a pill, don't yeah, we, Rick? Yeah, and then we're in some yeah, kind of fantasy. And then, uh, yeah, and then, yeah, I am Ayrton Senna for a little while. What about those bloody computer games? Oh, no one's reading a book God. anymore, are they? What's a tree? Download. <laughs> well, I'll <laughs> tell you enough. what. I'm going to play a song now. I think I've dissed you two for about 15 years, but I've got them wrong, and I'm going to play a lovely track off um, uh, the latest album. It's the last track on the album, Ground Beneath Her Feet. It's from uh, All You Can't Leave Behind. Beautiful. And uh, it is, well, I think it's their, one of their greatest works. Live Forever, Oasis. Still good, that one. It is very good. That's 1993, 94. It's mad, isn't it? Long time ago, eh? Crazy. Cool. All Crazy. those years ago, when they were setting out, they were great and that oh yeah before they became embarrassing well 
they might they can still they come can back. They can still come back. Their, their, their last album's not as good as their you know their, their first one and two and no. you know went but you know who knows Steve? Well, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, on. it's been a good gear for hip hop, Rick. Can yeah. I surprise you? Go uh, on. I've gone off hip hop uh, of recent years, but I've uh, I've been charmed this year by Bubba Sparks' album. I yeah. thought it was fun. Chop, 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 um, chop, I think Della Soul had an album this year. Which yeah, I yeah, yeah, they did. That they was did, good. They did, they good. They did. Uh, I didn't mind the Jay Z album. Uh, see, I like to cut a track. Yeah, it's all right on there. I yeah. actually quite liked. There's Is a new Outcast great. compilation that I don't know if it's out yet, or maybe it's just going to come out. I was out disappointed in the year, by the good. owl. I bought it on the. Well, Rick, I can I surprise? There's a new little compilation. I like the little owl. I like the owl and the cat and the dog. The new I'm... little compilation Rick has lots of tracks from their previous albums and other singles, and it's a good little dynamite buy. Maybe Steve, something for the new year in the sales. Just going to make a note of that. I'm going to buy that on the way home. Do it. <laughs> Um, but the album that I was particularly charmed by, Princess Superstar, is well, I, now I, a lot of people have been dismissing her as a yeah. bit of a novelty no. uh, sort of rapper. They um, said the same about Timmy Mallet, so don't listen to them. <laughs> so don't listen saying. to them. That's what I'm saying. So, um, so another track we, did play, we played a while back, yeah. uh, Untouchable Part Two, which sure. was Dynamite. Yeah. And this is another track. I think this was a single. It's called uh, Bad Babysitter. She raps very quickly, but listen carefully because the lyrics are fun. And slow it down a little bit. <laughs> That's about it, Steve. From the album Princess Superstar is Princess Superstar and Bad Babysitter. Did you enjoy it, Rick? Yeah, I did. Good, good. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. Uh, yeah. That's two, that's two out of two from the album I've liked. Yeah, exactly. I think I'll go and buy the album on the way <laughs> home, Do it, Steve, make another note of that, Rick. Note. You've got Outcast to buy, which has not actually been released yet, but I'm sure you can pull some strings. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll get someone onto that. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. Okay, XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais Show. Absolutely. Can I stop you there? Go on. With Steve Merchant. Thanks very much. No, no worries, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> uh, we're talking about presents here, and I just remembered something else I had. Um, uh, I was, I was just into science from like the age of like five six to about um so 18 19 i'm still into it but um i studied it and i absolutely loved it and i got a microscope set when i was about i suppose 10 mm. or 11 and uh just looking at butterfly wings and just anything under there like you know, 300 times thought this is amazing right and in it came these little shrimp eggs and uh you could look at them and then you could sort of, you could breed them. You had to put them in a salt water solution and then keep them at a certain temperature and they think, oh, and a nice little beach and they'd come out. Yeah. What I did, speed up the process a little bit, <laughs> popped it on the electric fire, <laughs> right? On the, uh, we had a fake, one of those fake plastic coal things with one of those little metal things that turned around from the heat and made it look like flames. It right. didn't. <laughs> no. I'll be honest, it didn't. Because <laughs> who the hell was fooled? Yeah. Coming in, go, you got a lovely <laughs> roaring fire. <laughs> yeah. <there." laughs> yeah. The flames were encased behind that plastic coal. <laughs> exactly. But I love it. Popped them on there, left them there for a little while. Bit too hot. <laughs> Came back, mm, just melted, really. <laughs> just dry, and the thing was sort of slightly warped. So. Them shrimps did not see the light of day. <laughs> Once again, your laziness and sinfulness yeah. just, I've got uh, to speed up the experiment. Absolutely. Come on. I, I can advance nature. Yeah, come exactly. Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, Do you um, stand in front of a microwave just going, come, come on, on. Come on. Yeah. A minute oh. and a half for soup. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That's so, majestic. Uh, yeah, but I learned the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. I, 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 Make sure the shrimps are the right temperature. Exactly. That's terrible. You isn't reminded it? me of something I was going to say then, but I can't remember. I've embarrassed myself live on air. Oh, yeah. I should have kept that quiet. No one would have <laughs> No one was there thinking, I wish Steve would say something. Now it's crazy. What I hope he's going to say the story. Yeah. Oh, um, I know what it was. It was what you said about the, um, about the sort of the fire and the, the idea of kind of buying a piece. It's like when people buy a fake Rolex watch. Yeah. And they, they tell people it's fake. Utter waste of time. Yeah. Why are you telling me that? It's like, what, what you're not, you're, I'm getting one over on the Rolex people. But, uh, you, you're, you're right on that side, but the point is why buy a fake Rolex watch? I mean, why buy a Rolex watch? I don't think they're well, very they look expensive. Good. They look nice. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, but it's a transparent display of wealth, but it's when there's like a builder who you know is on like five pound an hour wearing a Rolex. You're joking, aren't you, Steve? <laughs> Hod carriers can get up with a 550 pounds a day. <laughs> so you've embarrassed yourself. <laughs> I don't know anything, it seems like I don't know anything about the building industry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you know once, I, my friend showed off his watch that he'd bought, um, and a guy had sort of dodgy bloke had sold it to him on the street. Yeah. Uh, and he'd been up in London and some guy on Oxford Street had sold him this watch and it looked really good and it worked fine for years and it, and it just looked class and I thought, wow, it's brilliant. And I came to London for something and I walk, walked up and down Oxford Street for two and a half hours trying to get sold a dodgy watch. And I'd be going up to people like selling lighters going, yeah, not interested in lawyers. Got any uh, watches? Yeah. Go, no, I haven't got any watches. Go down to the yeah. perfume guy. And I go down to the perfume guy. You, any watches? <laughs> I love the idea that they saw you go, ah, I don't know what's that. go, no. <laughs> I know. Why? It's a bad advertisement, mate. 
<laughs> if people see you walking around with this, it's not good for trade. What? How dare you? <laughs> Send me one of those stolen watches. I can't do it, mate. More than my job's worth. <laughs> Tim Benson. Bla that's a gr Black Snow. That's a great tune. Song, I, lo it? I love it. It's sort of like punky, but it's got more in common with stuff like Steppenwolf and My Bad only worry Company. is that, um, so are they like back. sort of 18 year olds who, like Gomez, are trying to sound like they've kind of had a rough, hard living no, life? No, no. They they're, are they're, old 40 they're... somethings. Well, no, no, they're not. They sort of, but they're they're dirty. Yeah, good. Yeah. good. Do you notice that uh, Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge, just yeah. popped in there yeah, to bid us Merry yeah. Christmas? Yeah. And I noticed Claire, you said something like, uh, "Has he got another kid?" Did you say? Y yeah. How many yeah. children has he got? I think he's got the two now. Yeah. He clearly, he has got the knowledge, hasn't he? In every sense. Yeah. I imagine he's a great lover. Hey, well, he knows. I imagine he's got wonderful fingers. He knows what but magic but, fingers. Well, he's actually got little little um toady hands. Right. <laughs> he's he uses a lot of utensils. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's got. He's invented all these little things that go <laughs> with <laughs> and it just yeah. it's over very quickly, yeah. so we can get on with learning. <laughs> Pleasure it, gloves. Yeah. Because even when he's making love, there's a stack of trivia books. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So well, he can tell you about kind of great shags of the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's there. And here he comes. Yeah, here he comes. Oh, look, I love him because you don't know this, listeners, but he looks like Penfold. Oh, yeah, Danger Mouse. He, he does. He, he hasn't got... stopped him breeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. You don't usually call it. You usually call it breeding when it's humans. So, Steve um, Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Come in, come in, come in. Come in. Hey. Merry All right. Christmas to it's you. like Steve Wright in his posse. All yeah. right. Merry yeah. Christmas. Hi. 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 Are you? So tell us. Are you? Are you a great ladies man? Were you a great ladies man before you were married? That's not something I talk about. I'm married now. <laughs> because, right, because he's sort of like got a little shaved head and he's got a beard and it's exactly the same colour, sort of, sort of ginger hair. He looks like a tennis ball. <laughs> it's just <laughs> hair, exactly the same length, when all over his face. There's no reason for you to come in, was that abuse was happening without me here? Yeah, I know. And now I've come in, you just continue. But say hello, so it's with your blessing him. I think we're nice. Say Merry Christmas. Hi, Merry Christmas, all listeners. See, well, you're on at five o'clock, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Right, I'm going to make a note of that. Make when I bought those yeah. two albums, I'm going to listen to Steve Taylor, the man with knowledge, on at five o'clock on XFM. Yeah, isn't it incredible? Because he's been in since eleven o'clock this morning, just Steady. compiling information for every record he'll be playing. Yeah. The show's only twenty minutes long. But you know, with him, it's because he's got to uh, offload it. Yeah. He's, he's got to talk about it all the time because it's, it's only you know he's got a huge brain. It's warm. It's going <laughs> Robbing, warm. Yeah. All information. What, what are you playing next, Claire? Uh, you bored? Stars. Sorry, yeah. we'll, we'll, yeah. are we boring you, you two? Oh, it's just that list, isn't that cute? Yeah. So can yeah. you tell us about uh, Star Sailor? What do you know about some interesting facts about Star Sailor? Into the microphone, into the micropole that goes down the loudy box and out to the radiograph in the homes all around Ingloid. <laughs> <laughs> They're rubbish. Thank you. Steve Taylor. Controversial view. Rubbish. Still he has bred people. <laughs> hives, hives. Before that Star Sailor. It's been a bit of a punk sort of show this, isn't it? Yeah, it in general, in, in the year, uh, you know, the whole year's been a little bit of a, I blame the strokes, but, you see, I, I, I enjoyed punk. You were too young and don't care for it, but... Well, I have to say that if, if, if punk the first time round was as exciting as I found it this year, then I, I, I've missed out because I've really enjoyed it. Really. See, nice. I, I want to go and play all, all, all things like, um, X-ray specs mm, and, mm. you know, things like that now. Are they as kind of melodic, though, as, as things like the strokes and, um, and, uh, white stripes and so on? Are they kind of tuneful? Well, because the, the, the white stripes... In fact, I've picked them a very bad example because they were sort of like pop punk and uh, polystyrene was almost it, she wasn't a it wasn't a joke but um they had saxophones and stuff so right. it's just not as probably a bad example of early mm, mm. i mean just i mean the sex pistols summed it all up yeah know. sure sure but uh well we we, we enjoyed that don't we no, we did we did I, I have to say that although there has been a nice bit of sort of punky uh, sound this year for me it's been very much a year for the geeks and I, you'd have thought I'd have enjoyed well, that. Well, that's but new actually, metal, though, isn't it? Well, it is the new metal. All these people in their bedroom playing sort of computer games I and can't loving believe that new metal has and... taken over the world. It's, it's just mad, incredible. isn't it? It's absolutely huge. Suddenly, Link Linkin Park and but uh, see, I don't mind things like you know Marilyn Manson because they're you know they're having a go, they're having a bit of a laugh, and you know. But I, I just but it always so... seemed so perennially uncool to me when I was younger. Anyone who was into that kind of music, I just thought loser, and that's I mean that's. And coming the from the calling the pot black. Yeah, imagine that. It's, it's a year of the geeks, not just because of new metal, but also because of just these fantasy films with the Harry Potter stuff and now Lord of the Rings. It's like everyone's obsessed. Now it's cool to play stuff. Dungeons and Dragons. I know I can't get over it. I'm stunned. It's scary, isn't it? Because Eve, I was never into that rubbish. No, I've always thought it's, not. it's like yeah. It's like people who are still obsessed with Harry Potter. They go, "I'm rereading Harry Potter for the third time," and I think, "Listen, I haven't read it. Okay, I'm sure it's very good, but you're rereading it for the third time." There are books out there written by adults for adults yeah. with like sex and other exciting things. Yeah, and it's Harry Potter. Oh yeah, yeah. I just re like in case you miss something the first time. Right? But maybe they're learning the spells. <laughs> I just I'm stunned by it. I mean, I, I, have you read it all, Claire? Are you all up on this? What Harry, Harry Potter? Potter I North. actually went out and bought the first Harry Potter book and lost interest halfway through because there was no sex in it. No, so exactly. Be it's bothered. like why I never go to see uh, any Disney films. There's never the prospect of any nudity. 
If that's right. if there's no chance of. See, I think you're buying. Thing. I think you're actually buying the wrong books. Right. What you want to buy, Steve, is a pornographic magazine. Tell me more. Wow. In there, you see, what you get, ladies. <laughs> Other ladies sometimes. Ladies. Nudie ladies sometimes. Ladies. Stereophonics and the theme tune to BBC <laughs> Two's The Office, handbags and glad rags. Absolutely. Um. So I think we should be playing Christmas songs as well, though. Because uh, America's War is over. Christmas. A great, a great. Is it really? What the theme tune to The Office? I think you meant is. Yeah, I think you meant is war really over? <laughs> it yeah. is. Thanks, John. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's well. There. Yeah. To be fair, Rod Stewart did it first. <laughs> yeah. And we don't use the stereophonics version. <laughs> no. Right. Or the Rod Stewart version. Thank no. you. Too expensive. Exactly. Cost a fortune. Like to re-record it. Yep. A little known facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should save that for the DVD. Or S Steve Taylor would have blown it anyway, yeah, exactly. wouldn't he? To come on with the knowledge and told yeah. him everything. I was thinking that. Fairytown, New York. A beautiful song. Can we, can we find it? would be nice to dig it. I'm sure everyone's playing it at the moment. Yeah, that's where, the... yeah. Let's well, not I mean, play we should. It. It's good. No, it's Let's great. play Simply Having a Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul Can we McCartney. play uh, Driving Home for Christmas, Chris Rea? Oh, he is. Oh. Hey, oh, there's a lyric in that that goes, uh, I look at, he's in, in the car driving on Christmas. And he looks over at the other bloke in the other car and goes, He's just the same as me. Yeah, I was thinking that. He's <laughs> just the same great. as me. Do I yeah. them for is he saying he's copied him? He's like, wearing, Oi, you yeah. got, why are you wearing? That's the same as me. That is. What did you get your missus? The same as yeah. it? Are you? Who are? Are you a stalker? I'm Chris Rea. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. He's going up to Newcastle. Exactly. Are they talking? It. Is that where he's from? Yeah. 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 Is it Middlesbrough or Newcastle? Or do you remember when Rea made a Cleveland? film? Cleveland. Go on. Chris Rea made a film. They all do it. Like Dave Stewart made that film with the All Saints. Honest. Yeah. No one went to see it. No. But Chris Rea made a film which was like a kind of fantasy. Thing. Well, I think Shirley Bassey turned up in it, where he was like, have you ever seen this? No, but, oh, oh no, I can't tell you, I'll tell you off there. Really? Is it outrageous? Is it, Chris, is it libelous to Chris no, Rear? No, no, I had to interview Chris Rear about this. Really? And Shirley Bassey was there, and, and she and she pulled up in her limo. Yeah, I, don't, don't that... ask me, don't ask me. What it was some, it for? It was for some satellite And what did Bassey show? say? Did she, did she disrespect Bassey? the film? No, 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 when Bassey came into Pinewood <laughs> Studios, <laughs> When she came in, we all had to leave the set so she could drive through the set. We all had to leave so she could oh. drive in. Mm -hmm. No. Just thought I'd tell you that. God. It's very boring, really. I wish I hadn't told you that. What do you mean? She too. drove her car into the set? No, she was driven into Pinewood right. Studios, right. into wherever they were filming, and we had to all leave well, as she arrived. Leave? Because, I don't know. Did she, she know what you do? She so didn't like me. Yeah. I don't want that smack head out <laughs> in here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got some valuables in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sturgis. Diamonds yeah. are forever, and especially when she's <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I never saw the film, Steve, in answer to your questions. So. Yeah, well, I don't think anyone did, but uh, the fact that Chris Rea got money to make a film. I mean, has he released a song for years? He's still going. Is He's he? probably got a little bit of back catalogue going. You mentioned more Paul McCartney as well. We were talking about that with Steve Taylor. And I'm wondering, because you're talking about his money and the fact he's got loads of wealth, and that's fair enough, and he obviously deserves it. But mm. what I'm wondering is, he's got to be su such Steve, a Steve, does anyone guy. deserve it? <laughs> long, unless they spread it around. Really. Politics, politics. So. But, um, He's obviously, I mean, he must be one of the richest men, in, certainly in this country, and I'm yeah. sure, you know, internationally. Millions. Yeah. I don't know if he's reached the billion mark yet. But I'm wondering to myself, why doesn't he spend some of that money making his missus like a bionic leg? That'd be amazing. Oh, Do you know what God. I mean? She could, like, leap over buildings and stuff. That'd be genius. Well, she wouldn't leap. She'd hop. Because if I had that much money, I would. She could only hop. She'd, well, she'd just be running around in a circle. She'd, she'd win, the, one. She'd win the, get the, the other one sports well. games, wouldn't she? It's go easy. Just yeah. one hop. <laughs> exactly. And she's won. I mean, it'd oh. just be incredible, because I don't know, I mean, the Bionic Man, it was uh, it was expensive then, wasn't it? Six million then, Steve. <laughs> Christ knows what it would cost now, <laughs> with inflation. Six million dollars, of course, that's only about, um, four million pounds <laughs> yeah. sterling. Yeah. But now, and that was like, what was that, 74 or something? It must co it'd cost it'd you a fortune. hundreds of million. Oh, million. I wouldn't even want a guesstimate. But he's got, he got the, he got the eye. Sure. That's useful. <laughs> yeah. He can, well, see, miles away. Yeah. Um, he's got the two legs, you need the two legs for running. Did he, he have the two legs? Wouldn't it be, yeah, of course he did, otherwise he'd be hopping, wouldn't yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> but uh, he got the one arm. He didn't need the one arm. They thought let's not look mad. Let's not make him keep buying it. But the one thing that I, what always worried me, right, was that when he lifted up a truck with his one good arm, why didn't his back collapse? Yeah, yeah. He didn't have a bionic spine, did he? Sure. I sure. could see. I could see him lying on the ground and sort of like doing a sort of a leg press. That'll be fine. But when he stand up, his leg, but his back would just collapse, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you're beginning to wonder if an astronaut <laughs> who fell out of a heli uh, an airplane while test driving it and was rebuilt as a half robot, yeah. you're wondering if there's maybe some flaws in that. Uh, yeah. In that concept. yeah. And Oscar yeah. Goldman, I don't know what. It, and isn't it convenient that his girlfriend had the same two legs, one arm? I think so that's this, what drew him closer this, together, though. Rick. This time she had the ear. I don't think he was just on the pull and by chance he got her undressed. He thought, my God, that does that looks like a. Familiar 
familiar plastic arm. And there was a bionic dog, wasn't there? And a horse, apparently. Well, why do you need a bionic horse? I know. When you can run at 70 miles an hour, you don't really need to get on a horse, do yeah. you? Unless the bloke had the bionic horse wasn't bionic. And he could run like really. Well, I fast. think the problem was that they'd spent so much money on all these bionic things. They just made a bionic horse, entered it in races. Yeah, he had to get their money back. Yeah, exactly. Steve Austin, he's not, he's not <laughs> turning up. <laughs> he's swanning round. Very, a very costly investment. Does anyone remember Bionic Man? Is this just yeah? This is all shown again, isn't it? On Bravo. Everyone knows of the Bionic. Oh, just ask Canfield about it. Oh, yeah. but he loves it. Because Canfield's only about fourteen, and he knows the Bionic it, Man. I know, yeah. He's yeah. been watching it for thirteen and a half years. Sturge, um. Let's play another song because it, we just played the cover version of uh, Handbags and Nairags. Sure. Great song, really good. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing cover Diversion. versions all this year. Mm. And uh, one of my favourites was this Run one I played. Cover. I played a long time back. Actually, I think this, I played this when we were standing in for Dermot O'Diddley. Yeah, not he was back today, wouldn't he? Just pops he up when he wants. <laughs> exactly, didn't he? But um, I'm not going to play any cover versions in the new year. That's Go on. That cover me up or well, cover I'll, me bad. That's cover me, uh, run for cover. Well, I've I've finished with my um, f oh, I, I call it film review. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah. we're going to have all new features in the new year. Yeah. But uh, this is I'd love to play this again. This is a once around the block, as done by the Kings of Convenience. Play this, Claire. Lovely. Mm. <laughs> a short-lived um, kind of uh, new folk movement, wasn't there, this year, that kind of came and went, and the Kings of the Convenience were supposed to be part of that, and their album, uh, Quiet is the New Loud, I thought was an absolute treat, and a lot of people just sort of ignored uh, it. Lovely, lovely track, but lovely uh, version. That was never actually on the album, that was from the Toxic Girl uh, single, and that's Once Around the Block by Ballet Drawn Boy, as done by the Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. This is great, isn't it, coming in just like playing songs? Oh man, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely Do job. Do you think the listeners enjoy this as much as we do? I would imagine not. No, I don't think no. so either. No. But does that make us bad people? No, I don't think it no. does. It makes us wealthy people. And lucky, very lucky. <laughs> That's true enough. PJ Harvey. Lovely. Love it, great. Great, I'm loving this, Steve. Yeah, that was Nearly great. Nearly Christmas. I had a couple of chocolates there, didn't I? Oh, the yeah. The purple ones in roses. Mm, mm, very much mm. like the Quality Street one, the hazelnut and the toffee. Yeah. But. Get me in the mood. Now, I know if you're a fan like me, uh, you love the roast dinner. Oh. We love the roast dinner. But the uber roast dinner is the Christmas dinner. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to it. No, I'm thinking about it right now. I can't believe how many different sort of meats you're going to have in your house. Well, we always have the turkey, obviously. Yeah. Plus, we always yeah, have yeah, a little yeah. bit of pork, a little bit of lamb. Oh, God. And the, don't, don't forget the sausage, you know. Well, I love the fact that someone's designed the turkey uh, Christmas dinner, and then they thought, wait a minute, I also want a little sausage, and let's wrap it in bacon. Why not? Let's, let's just have, have some stuff in it can, well. we have some, can we have all the meats that are available? Someone said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's sausage meat in the stuffing. Now, and. Well, sue me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sue me if I want a bit of extra sausage. You know what I mean? Oh. It's the it's the greatest. It's the work of art, and it takes it's hours. Genius. Rick, can I ask you what kind of Go veg on. you going uh, with this year? Veg. Well, I, I just love the roast potato. I mean, people have tried to sneak in the Brussels. Because you don't eat vegetables or anything. No, I try green, not parsnip, to eat parsnips. I love parsnips, but when they're crisp and crunchy, like a like a like a trendy crisp yes. in a wine bar, <laughs> yes. I love it when you know, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. I can I? Oh, we'll be having carrots. We'll be having leeks. We'll be having <laughs> Brussels, obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brussels. Yeah. Um, and there's all, we'll all, my mum will always throw in a little bit of something crazy. Maybe there'll be a little bit of red cabbage, something wild, or, you know, or, something or, exotic, or something vim, or a used condom. To be quite honest, I think she's mental, your mother. <laughs> yeah. She's got to um, stop that. But who knows? Any kind of uh, any kind of treats. I'm looking for. I'm just so. And I love the fact about the Christmas dinner. Is it people are taking weeks, years planning it. I know they take. Yeah. You know, they cut months. Can they got yeah, to frost? Have you told? Can you talk about your your grandparents? Well, my grandparents, of course. The thing about my grandparents, I have mentioned this before. Yeah. I don't. Think I love this. I think they've got about three teeth between them. It's unbelievable. They they. My grandfather. They're all their own though. He was in the RAF in the war, <laughs> right? And he, for some reason, he, he had problems with his teeth, and they pulled them all out oh, and they really? replaced them with um with a, a false set of false teeth. But during the wartime, I don't know whether this was just like what it was like during the war or just the forties. But he had a kind of wooden plate put in with like some kind of fake teeth attached. Oh no! Um, and he's never had that changed. So you know, he's still got the wooden plate and about three teeth still hanging on it. Oh. It's just a, so he and my grandmother combined, they cannot eat anything that's kind of solid. So they will literally get up for a Christmas dinner. They'll get up and they'll put the meat on like it's sort of six in the morning. Go back to bed for the day. Get up and eat it about nine o'clock at night. And they and the best compliment you can have if you've cooked dinner for my grandparents is, "Oh, this is lovely. You can suck it away." Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine why do they just it li liquidise strong? it? Have a nice little roast they smoothie. They have done in the past. Really, and, and a little apple crumble smoothie. If to we follow. take them out to, f if we take them out to eat. Uh, like at a restaurant or something, we've got to phone ahead to make sure there's fish on the menu. Really? Because they can only have fish. But then the bones, you see, that's a problem for them. Well, you can take the bones out of fish, can't you, and sort of mash it up. Yeah, but the eyes are going Steve, as well. could I suggest the fish cake? 
<laughs> it's already mashed, it's with the potato, it's in a crispy crumb, which doesn't hurt anyone, whether you've got teeth or not. Rick, can I, um, Go on. make a little- Yeah. I just want to make a little- cause obviously yeah. not everyone's as fortunate at Christmas, Rick, no. as us. We're what about, about the vegetarians? <laughs> <laughs> what are they eating? A nut cutlet. <laughs> what the hell a is lovely a lovely little nut cutlet. cutlet. Can't they have like tofu, but, but in the shape of a turkey? But I love the fact that so often, you know, certainly your Linda McCartney veggie items, they always try to fool you into thinking it's the real thing. You know, some veggie sausages that they've injected with something so they'll taste like sausages. Yeah. We Eat the like, real thing. I don't, you don't really need it, that arbitrary shape. If it's, you might as well just have it any shape. What you angers can, me with the vegetarians, have any shape, really? you? What angers me with the vegetarians and the vegans, even worse, is that, look, we're breeding all these animals to be eaten. Yeah. They're gonna get slaughtered anyway. Chow down! Come yeah. on! Yeah. Those chickens in those little kind of pens, you know, four of them in a little square box. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're sort of crapping eggs out every couple of minutes. Yeah. You're, you're not, not eating. You're, you're not a zoologist, are you? I am not officially. Yeah. No, but I know what I'm talking about, really. Yeah, you I'm, do. I'm, I've seen brochures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've yeah. walked past a farm while on holiday. Excuse me, farmer. Could um your finest hens crap me some eggs for my tea? <laughs> no chick, worries. Chick, 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 <laughs> crap a little egg for me. Oh, Brilliant. An old Christmas class. Oh, I, no. Spare a thought for the vegetarians, and worse still, the vegans. Yeah. And uh, what about Travis? What do you think they'll be doing this Christmas? I'm a whale of a time. I'll tell you what, Steve. It was an excuse to <laughs> play the record. Genius. It was a link. Travis. And Driftwood on XFM 104.9. It's the Christmas edition of the Ricky Gervais Show with Steve Merchant. Hi. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's good. I'm in the Christmas spirit, actually. I have to yeah, say. yeah, definitely. I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Will you be looking forward to, I know everyone talks about it, Rick, but Christmas telly? I love Christmas telly. Uh, uh, Christmas Day telly's great. I get up and, and Noel's giving out some presents around hospitals and that, and then you might have a, the, 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 uh, number ones of the year mm -hmm. from um, uh, top of the pop. Then you might have a little. I don't know. I don't watch the Queen's speech, but you know, you, you have a little sleep then, don't yeah, you? Maybe exactly. after a big yeah. roast dinner with uh, too many sausages. Yeah, I'm only joking, Mum. Let's have some more. <laughs> <He's through enough. laughs> more yeah. chocolate, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's not. You know, there's, there's people crazy. starving in the world. So let's not rub it in. Hopefully, they're not listening to the radio. No, probably not. Just scrabbling around in the cold and the dirt, <laughs> looking for food. <laughs> 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 we are actually laughing about it. Know, we actually, yeah. we actually laugh. Rick, about, I find that if I laugh on. about it, then I can ignore the problem easier. Yeah, <laughs> not face that, up to the horror. Yeah, I know that that that's too easily done, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It's too easy to face the horror of the world. It's better to laugh it off. I know. That's what annoys me about buskers. Because mm. a beggar just sits there and you can pretend you haven't seen him. Exactly. Whereas a busker's shouting out. Yeah, and you want to go. He know, you know, unless you're deaf and blind, mm. he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. 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 So. Have you anyway. cultivated a kind of universal. T I've cultivated this kind of thing I always do with a beggar. When they offer their hand, I just. I don't even say anything anymore. I just sort of kind of offer up my hands as though to say, look, I have no money in my yeah. hands. And yeah. just a kind of. A kind of sympathetic turn of the head. And I yeah. sort of mouth some words like. And it normally involves sorry, mate, or something. Yeah. Because uh, I find it's better to be courteous than like kick them in the head or anything like that. Yeah, no, know? I never do that, and I, and I always acknowledge them. I never, I actually never ignore them. No, and, and sometimes I give depending on. Or, uh, Although yes, I have to say all, another all situation, another it? successful I'd... year for me of avoiding the big issue salesman. I've never bought a copy of the big issue. I love the fact you are actually proud of that. Well, it's, it got to the point where it, where I, I actually am appalled by myself, but it's like it's a contest now. It's like I've managed to do it for so long that it's like, it's almost a competition with myself. Well, it's the same as me with reading a novel. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. Although I blew that in 1987 when I had Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> I'm still kicking myself. I, uh, I'm looking forward, of course, to, I'm hoping it'll be Dennis Norden's Laughter File, Volume 7. Oh, seven, you're having a laugh, 27? It, it used to be it'll be right on the night, but I think they've changed the name to Dennis Norden's Laughter well, File. Well, it, it's great though, isn't it? Because he comes... You're one of those people. You're and one it, of those goes, people. This is something we call <laughs> doorstop. <laughs> yeah. And it's sort of like, just what? Yeah. And it's, yeah. doesn't he just go into the director this general? This is one called Let Sleeping Logs Die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, oh god. But what I don't understand is why people, why no one has said to him, or why hasn't he watched that TV, why hasn't he, at Christmas, right, he's gone home with the family, he's watched, he's gone, come on everyone, let's watch my show, and he's watched it. It's and an after file 27. Yeah, that's and I, that's me. The family must have been faking laughter, and why is he not turning around why did no one tell yeah. me? Crap! Why doesn't he go to Greg Dyke and go or whatever it's on? Well, it's like ITV, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Oh, who's that then? ITV task. It's who's in charge? Does I don't know. They came every week, don't they? But really? go to them. Just watched uh, me on that Laughter File Twenty Seven. It's rubbish, isn't it? And they go, yeah. They go, well, why didn't you tell us that? Well, we thought we thought it would kill you, to be quite honest. But why didn't you let my son take over or something? Well, Dennis, he's he's eighty-four. <laughs> <laughs> How old am I then? Well. We don't know. <laughs> we, we've had you carbon dated, but it's off the scale. <laughs> but why do you let me carry that stupid file? Are you reading this now, Dennis? Oh, I, I can't am, yeah. remember what I got to say. Well, don't, don't read it. Just, just 
speak normally. Two coffees, please, waiter. No, sheet. no, what this doing. is what we call talking to the director general. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but I can't wait for that, yeah. And uh, Dennis oh, Lawrence there is two, two, who, um, can I just say one? Who's in the audience of Dennis Lawrence? <laughs> like, who's, who's, go, who's gone, Joan, I got two tickets for a laughter file, I can't believe yeah. my laugh. I've been on the internet. Because they're always laughing, they're cracking up, the people on that show. I've never laughed once. Maybe it was an audience that they filmed in 1973, mm. but it was the first time they saw a goalkeeper get hit in the balls yeah. or something, or Jackie Charlton or something, or, <laughs> exactly. or, or a dog fall off a slide. Well, it's people, it's either old people who just can't remember, they've already seen those clips a thousand times before, or they yeah. can't remember something, or yeah. it's, um, I was always thinking of the, the people that, um, what's that show, uh, that, that um, Beadle used to do, the, uh, Beadle's Framed. You've been framed. I think now what's happening is, while Lisa Riley's doing all the scripted jokes, there's just someone stood behind her, maybe just showing a picture of her, like, nude, or in yeah. a bikini, or just pointing and just making jokes at her expense. Exactly, That's yeah. why they're laughing. He's lovely Lisa Riley off, oh, uh, Emmerdale, of course. Fatty Riley. No, don't say it's not fat. It might be glad you don't know. <laughs> it could be glad you No, mean. just stop it. <laughs> You can't say I that. I don't know. I've gone a bit crazy. I've just gone. No, gone no. A bit but she, wild. she. What if she's listening to this and she gets an eating disorder or something, yeah. or you yeah. know, becomes bulimic? Because what you? She's probably at home binging now. I know. She's leaving out the vomit and she can't get her fat fingers <laughs> in her mouth. <laughs> Anyway, I'll tell you what, the best gig of the year, surely the White Stripes, Rick. I know everyone's raving about it. I'm listening to hear one of their tracks. What's it called again, Claire? Fell in love with a girl. <laughs> Oaks, Kirsty McCall, Fairytale, New, New York. We're just saying, it's, a, it's just a brilliant song, isn't it's it? It's genius. It's, it's genius. Great. And what I love is the fact that it was quite a big hit, and it's like sometimes even a majestic song like that, that normally would get overlooked, just manages to drift up to the surface somehow, and even, you know, everyone, the, the white trash. Well, the the, the imagery is great as well. It's beautiful. How can old slut on junk be romantic? Amazing. Well, we're fans. Yeah. Sturgis thought he was talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it, Sturgis. You know, You're clean. Way we are. No, You're way. clean now. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, we got we got more treats. Um, after this, we've got a song for the ladies. We're, uh, yeah, we're going out of um, uh, sync here. We're going to play song for the ladies, the penultimate track, because yep. I want to leave them with a Christmas classic, the Joni Mitchell classic, uh, uh, River. So look forward to that. Absolutely. Well, well, it's been a great show. It has. Even, even though I say so myself. Yeah, yeah. I've you know, enjoyed I've, I've enjoyed it. Looking back over the year. Rick, looking can forward I just, to Christmas. Go on. Can I just throw a thanks, a big thanks, out to all the people that have emailed us and phoned in and written to us over and the last And sent us things. Months. I think yeah. it's about four people who keep doing it. Yeah. Recycling the same Under different names, though. Exactly. But we don't, we don't tend to read stuff out, but, uh, it is appreciated. It is, and it's often gets into the show, whether you know it or not. Exactly. In some way, we steal off, steal your jokes and pass them off as our own. N nice email from someone there, saying there is a tofurkey? Tof a tofurkey, yeah. So a tofu turkey. Yeah. You can buy it in the whole trimmings. See, the trimmings. I, and I, I've made that up. I mm. could have written that down and, well, it had already been done. Yeah. So I've said we can't paint in a tofurkey. Sure. sure. So I've embarrassed myself again. Sturgis, are you going to be driving home for Christmas? No, I'm, I'm going to be here. Christmas. I'm going to be here. God, she's working. He's yeah. just the same as me. <laughs> she's working on Christmas, too. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Someone emailed me the other week saying, will I be voice tracked over what Christmas? Does that mean? Well, I d I'm not quite sure it's a radio term, apparently, right, but right. no, I, I will be live. Wow. On Christmas Day? Oh, yes, Christmas Day evening. So you can't drink and stuff? Well, well, not not well, not as no. much as like, yeah, yeah. you no. would have liked. I mean, you're I'll always drunk on air, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but it's getting that point. I didn't know she drank till I saw her sober one day, one yeah. Sunday morning when she came in to do an early show, and yeah. she was talking differently. Yeah, she went. I, the pubs aren't open yet. Exactly. And I uh, realised <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what should we play now? I don't know. Well, I've kind of felt like we've sort of exhausted ourselves. Really, we've run out of stuff to say. Have we've we? Passed, we've made all our observations about Christmas. Yeah. We've taken a sideways glance <laughs> at, at the sausage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh I remember right, funny words. At this year's stuffing. Christmas. Remember we talked about stuff. Do you remember the, it was, I think it was four links ago. Yeah, sure. No, no, listen. Do you, we're gonna call it <laughs> sausage loving. <laughs> and we talked about all the different things you have on a plate and that. And we started off with like turkey and then and we listen, went, I'm on, just trying to remember some of the uh, amusing bloopers that took place uh, over the course of the show. Uh, remember when you didn't make it back in time for the link and you were making tea? <laughs> I was making tea! Was oh god! One. What was that one mm. when, um, I think you said something like, um, uh, that was a right stri white stripes. <laughs> He's exactly. going to say the word wrong yeah. or something. Yeah. Oh, oh god. god. If you're one of those people. Oh, this is great. I'll tell you what, I'd like to play a record because I'd like to talk about this link later. Yeah. <laughs> Should we play a record? Yeah, well, let's look back on it, like, you know, amusingly, like I Love 1980. Oh, Let's do that God. in a second. So, uh, I'll play a, a song for the ladies, final one of the year, and it's a song which I did play a long time ago, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's from uh, Nick Cave's album, uh, what was it called again? I think it was called No More Shall We Part, and it's an absolutely magnificent I'm, I'm song. I'm just remembering the last time you played it. <laughs> I know. It was brilliant, because you, you introduced it, oh. and then, um, I think it was Carl. 
pressed the we button. We played it and we listened to it. Were we, were we playing Buckaroo or eating Curly Whirlies at the time? I can't remember. <laughs> I was on a space offer. Oh. And it came from the Bad Seeds. Love letter. Oh. Beautiful That's song. Absolutely beautiful. Mm. Well, I, I'm loving this, but we've, uh, we've got a go soon. Sadly, the clock has beaten us, Rick. Um, but, uh, it's the last track that we're gonna play this year. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely track. Um, it starts off with a little bit of jingle bells that we're getting a little sure bit enough. of tribute on the piano. It's Joni Mitchell and the river. Enjoy. We will be back, uh, next week, will we? All the week after. No, we're back we're on the 12th. Yeah. P.O.D. or P.O.D. as I call them. Mm -hmm. I don't. No. XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Yeah. So Dermot O'Diddley. Yes. Three weeks and weeks, weeks and weeks in a row he doesn't even turn up and now suddenly he's all over breakfast. I know, it's, yeah, he's standing in for the breakfast show. Why weren't we asked to do that? Well, it's we were. Were we? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, but I don't want to get up that early, do I? Sure, sure. Uh, I feel a bit hungover today, actually. Do you? Yeah. What's happening? What, what, were you partying last night, were you? Well, not partying, we just went out went out for a couple of drinks, then had a meal, and then went to the borderline and saw about- I'll tell you about that, it's good. You saw a band? That's the first yeah. time in years, isn't it? It is, yeah. Movie? Yeah, because it knows- do you know John Sim, the actor? Mm, not really. He's in this band, right, called Magic, Magic Alex, and it was really good, they're sort of like, sort of like a friendly oasis, they got, you know, sort of yeah, quite, yeah. M you know, it's quite mank sort of feel, but it's really good, good songs and everything. Is he the singer? Yeah, no, he's a guitarist, nice right. But, it was full of actors, because it, because it, right, and I felt quite tall. That's ludicrous, because you're See, a very short man. Well, I am. I'm sort of, um, I was average, but now I'm not, I don't think. Mm. Five or eight, that's right. But there, I was like quite, it was like Lilliput. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just got to hang out uh, actors <laughs> do. So, or, or, like, yeah. This is the reason, because act actors are often very, quite handsome people, but yet they're always yeah, quite we obnoxious. Yeah, we are, we are, we are, we are. No, I mean, they're normally quite obnoxious, Rick. Again, you know, you're a good example <laughs> of that. <laughs> and yet, yet, I think it must be the small man complex, that's what makes them so obnoxious and so kind of desperate for attention. Didn't oh, realise it before. Steady on. Because of course I tower above everyone. You do, don't you? I'm, uh, for people who don't know who are listening, I'm six foot seven inches tall. That's, 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 that's high. Yeah. That's and, big. and, and, um, for people who have never seen him, he doesn't hold it well. It's not like he's a sort of handsome athlete, is it, Carl? He's a bit of a, what, what do you call him? A t Carl, don't uh, answer. No, 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 no. Don't get drawn into that. No, you know, you, you know the game he's playing. No, 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 no. Do you know yesterday when you were in the office? Yeah. You did a little move <laughs> and it reminded me of Blakey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you, Gervais. Oh, I hate you, Pilkington. That's not a stance. Yeah, but even he was, he held it a little bit better, didn't he? Because he was a man, you know, he yeah, had a big coat and everything and a peak cap. But, uh, yeah. I can't believe you. Like, I've not suffered enough from being freakishly tall. Now, two of my best buddies, yeah. live on radio, are just- It's not just the height, though, is it? It's the <laughs> posture and the face and everything. But it's got your places, oh. hasn't it? <laughs> no. What do you no, mean? He's got those faces. I think I think people give you a bit more of a chance in in your career and stuff. It's like, uh, what? Well, yeah, stacking shelves. Because <laughs> I can reach to a high level. <laughs> Muse, plug in, baby, on XFM 104.9. Rick, Rick I, go on. Well, yeah, but I know you guys are laughing about the height thing, and uh, for those that have only just tuned in, I am six foot seven inches tall, which is which is tall, and that's big. And I, you know, I pride myself on it in a way. You know, I've worked hard. I've not smoked. I <laughs> ate well. You know, yeah. it's an accomplishment. But obviously, I didn't have much involvement in it. I just am, and it's a curse because mainly the problem is that you you can't get stuff. You can't get clothes. You can't get shoes. You know? Yeah. So it's size 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 fourteen feet. Yeah, that's. But it is genuine, and I don't know. I mean, it costs a lot to buy a pair of size fourteen shoes, and it, so I don't. I mean, if you're poor, if you were genuine poor, I don't know how you'd afford to be tall. Because the clothing costs more, everything costs more. I've, I've seen this in comics, that you'd, you'd actually go to school in a barrel. Wearing a barrel. With right. just braces, it'd yeah. just be a barrel like that, and you'd have sort of flip-flops. Uh, <laughs> and you'd um, take a mule yeah. with you. They would have a mule, didn't they? The but poor people, people always think like, it, that they, like you'll be in a pub or something, and people, I mean, people just think they can talk to you about it. They just think, hey, oh, you, you lanky, uh. it's just like, because it's like they But think, that really annoys you, doesn't it? Well, it annoys me because it's like they think I should be proud of it. Like, well, it's exactly, but that they don't think that this, this, this is not a disadvantage. This is not a disability, is it? You're you're taller than most people. It might it get a disability. To, no, no, no. If you were if you were eight foot three, it'd be slightly disabilitating. You would, you know. But you, you're, what disabilitating? <laughs> yeah. No, you're a medical man, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> 
But, no, the point is it's a disability because <laughs> when you go on public transport, like if you're on a coach. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You, the only place I can sit on a coach is that seat. On the driver's lap. Either, either on the driver's lap or that seat at the very end. Yeah. You know, where, which is kind of, which sits into the aisle. Yeah. That's the only place I can well, sit. Well, you just got and stand up, some sort stand of up. the back waving at drivers. You could drive it from the back. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes, watch it. Yeah. Uh, were, were you a tall baby? Oh, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Merchant, uh, you've given birth to a basketball player. <laughs> Look at his dribble already. Were you a tall baby? Babies aren't tall. Oh, what, All I, right. At what point did did you suddenly like? Jesus, nothing fits me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't happen overnight. Carl. Let's do a little graph. How tall were you at five? Oh, I don't know. Three foot. Three foot. How tall were you at twelve? Six foot. Six. What are you in? I don't know, do I? How do I remember? I don't remember this. Well, when did teachers start calling you freak boy and they, lanky? They didn't. They was, it wasn't didn't they? too much. It was, no. He went to a funny school. <laughs> I went bowling with him once. Well, I'd never been bowling before, and he'd been once before, and he went, let's go to this bowl. We went to a bowling alley, right? And, um, you have to wear these special shoes. Now, they're, they're sort of like pointed things anyway, and they're, um, multi-coloured, sort of red and green, like, they look pretty weird. And, uh, and the woman said to me, oh, what size? I said, oh, eight. She went, yeah. She went, what size are you? He went, 14. She went, 14. He went, you probably haven't got them. He goes, she goes, yeah, I think we have got one pair. And she put them on the table, and it was like Krusty the Clown. And I just started laughing. They looked so long, and he had to run around this bowling alley in these freaky clown yeah, but shoes. But they don't look freaky clown like when I'm wearing them, because the rest of me is in proportion to it. It looks like a little wall bracket. They were the worst <laughs> thing, one of the worst things that happened to me was when I was like, I don't know, when I was about 16 or something, we went to, um... It's a fire uh, alarm. There's a fire alarm going off. There's a fire alarm going off. And the off fire the light's going off. Yeah. Should, should, should we not just should maybe play a record way. and go and check that out? Wrap it up if you want. Oh, no. No, not wrap it up. Play a record. I'm gonna go. No, the See fire has gone off, Rick. It's gone off. Oh! Well, they might have burned down! Yeah, I think we'd know about it. The flames licking around our ankles would be a clue. God. I'm gonna go and investigate. Oh, you shouldn't ignore the fire alarm, did you? Riley! We're entertaining oh, the look, nation. Oh, look at him, he's scared of fire! <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> Mercury Rev. The dark is rising. That's a good song, isn't it? I noticed that your, um, investigating the fire mainly involved wandering out into the office, looking around a bit, then coming back. Yeah. What did you find out? There was no fire. There was no fire? No. Oh, right. But I love that it Imagine that though. Imagine like, that there's a fire and there's loads of fire and they go get back and you go to the fire and all oh, get back. <laughs> oh look at him! I go, would. Bark. I would. And actually yeah. justify to. Okay, there's heavy shelling, lads. Retreat. Oh, brack Sarge. I'm sorry. <laughs> brack Sarge. Yeah. Just there was a fire. Like, I'd never seen it before. A fire thing going off. There was a fire. Alarm. I thought, oh, let's at least have a look if there's a fire. That's all I thought. See, there's someone official coming in now to tell us we should have been running out. There's no fire. Yeah, well, you can't just stop entertaining, you know, the people of London just because there's a fire. This isn't the Titanic. <laughs> oh, I don't have to carry on playing. I don't know. I, it feels I, like a bit of a sinking ship. Really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all right. Nice one. Oh, nice oh. one. I don't know who oh. I'm taking off then. Probably me. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, listen, let me just tell you briefly. This this is a, another example of of how people can just exploit you and make fun of you when you're tall. Yeah. Um, I was quite tall, I've always been like about six foot seven for quite a while now. And when I was about sixteen, um, I went to a, a big New Year's celebration in Bristol where I come from. And they, everyone kind of congregates in this big sort of part of town and there's all people dancing around, like in Trafalgar Square. And um, I was there and I just, somehow I sort of, I just picked up a balloon somewhere along the line, one of those kind of helium sort of balloons and I was holding that and dancing around. And um, these two girls came up to me and I was thinking, yeah, okay, you know, it's New Year's Eve, brilliant, you know, that's, uh, that's the, my kind of party. Yeah. And they came up and they went, hey. Once a year. And they went, <laughs> they said, uh, you're gonna be here for long? And I went, well, maybe. And they said, it's just that we've arranged to meet back at you <laughs> in about an hour. I went, what do you mean? I went, well, it's just because we can see you wherever you are. <laughs> Don't worry, you can move around and stuff. We'll see you with the balloon. Just arrange uh, to meet some friends. I love that. A landmark. So, like, so pilots use that. Oh, we're just coming in. Uh, there's, uh, we'll be, uh, 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 when we see Steve Merchant, we'll be descending <laughs> to Bristol Temple Mead. <laughs> What's really funny is New Year's Eve, Trafalgar Square, you've got a huge column, but the yeah. Steve is like the meeting point. Steve's got a huge <laughs> column. <laughs> Brilliant, Rick. Well done. <laughs> Award-winning comedy from Ricky Gervais. Happy Monday. It took you back, didn't it? Happy Monday's there, Manxina. Uh, Carl's like really getting down. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh come on. Got come any on. Veras? Oh come on, Mel. Ah, uh, did it take you back, did it? Yeah. 
How old are you? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. So you were oh you were just going into uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? No. Yeah. That that no, you don't understand. It's just uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. I thought we discussed about involving <laughs> cars. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. The yeah. management have told us we're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't so speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm a cusp. Can I just Virgo. make an appeal? I don't want to I'm talk. I'm the cusp, the Virgo, he said. <laughs> Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? <laughs> just wave bright objects at him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got a competition this, Steve. We have, but before we mention that, can I just ask something? I don't want to exploit our position on the radio. No. But I wonder, because I'm very tall, and it's very tricky for me to get size 14 shoes and big clothes and stuff, can I just get people to send some stuff if, if like, maybe they own a shop which Yeah, but it'd be, stuff? it'd be things like homemade clogs That's that people cool. have carved out of the chunks of wood they found That's in whatever. the shed. Whatever. It's not really great. America. When I was in America, uh, everyone says to me, oh, you go to America. It is a cool. I'm out of my own skin. <laughs> um, when I was in America, everyone told me that like, it would be, re you know, really easy to get big clothes and big shoes and that, because they're all huge and all freaks over there. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I steady on. And I was wandering around New York, and I was going in a few shops, kind of saying, you know, we've got size 14, US 15 shoes, and they were going, no, they, we want something. <laughs> is that a difference? Yeah. One. And they literally were laughing at me. There was a couple of shops where they literally laugh and get, like, someone else in and come and look at the tall, freaky Englishman. Really? And one guy said, oh, I remember we had someone come in here once, and he said he'd been to a which sold kind of stuff for really tall people and and um and he said i think i can remember the address and he sort of looked at the, the sort of telephone direction he made a note of it and i went on the subway and i went down all the foot and i lit i went and it took me ages to get and really hard to find it i finally went in there i've never seen it, it was heaving right with freaks it really? was amazing they were, it was like they just kind of gargoyles it was like something from lord of the rings they were just kind of these tall people and kind of gnarled did they turn around tanks. and start bowing to you it was incredible yeah and i went in and i just said hi i'm looking for a kind of sort of sort of guy went yeah sure and he sort of hobbled off into the darkness and came back with exactly the kind of pair of shoes i wanted i couldn't believe my luck it might be a magic shop but it was like it was like that shop in um, mr ben it might have been a dream though you yeah. see <laughs> did you have you still actually got the shoes no because when mr ben sort of like goes back and wakes up next day he finds like a feather in his pocket where he remembers he he was a, you know, a 17th century sort of squire or something, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> uh, the classic episode of Mr. Penn when he becomes <laughs> a 17th century <laughs> squire. Oh, oh dear. Mr. Ben learns to play the harpsichord. But, uh, it's uh, like, when Mr. Ben, that, that black shopkeeper goes, right, are you going to pay for that? You're, no, not, you're not just going to go yeah. through that door and then have an adventure and come back, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> no, you're not, you're barred. Yeah. You just make me sick. We, we wait nothing from you. <laughs> Well, I'm not in this for your amusement, Mr. Ben. Is it only Ben who's got the insider knowledge about the magical doorway, or...? I don't know, because that, that fella in the fez doesn't seem to have anyone else there. No, rarely. He's always grinning, though. He knows yeah. something. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not a documentary, though, is it? It's a, it's, it's a kid's show, isn't it? I'm trying to remember. No, it's um, not. It's just a kid's show, so anything sure. can happen. Yeah. That's yeah. A, a lot of people make that mistake sure. when they slag off something like Scooby Doo or oh. Thundercats. It's not not really Bye, reality. Yeah. It's just a kid's show. Well, yeah. Mr. Ben, they were all on drugs, weren't they? Like Magic Round of My mate <laughs> fancied Cheetera from Thundercats. Cheetera. Um, Which one was Cheetera? I quite like She Was. She was. She was the lovely. She was a lovely cat. Yeah, she was a real dish. What's the What's the What's the sexiest cartoon? Uh, I'm glad you've asked. Uh, a lot of people say Jessica Rabbit. They do, and they'd be right to say that because she's actually human. She's not an animal, which is good. What? Isn't she? No, no. She, she's a normal woman married to a rabbit. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, not. She's, yeah, Jessica Rabbit. Is that what she got a surname, Rabbit? But yeah, she's not actually. She's a rabbit. married Roger Rabbit, but she's not actually a rabbit. She's a glamorous woman. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, never yeah. seen it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the weird thing about it. That's weird, though, isn't it? It is weird. The idea of a rabbit having sex with a beautiful woman. That, that is the weirdest thing about it. How does that make you feel? Annoyed, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah. But I bought some bunny ears just after I saw the film. Oh, hip hop. You got your hip hop track. Oh, yeah, good. No, no, no. Um, this album was uh, rated by a lot of people last year. Uh, my sources tell me that it's being re-released and re-recorded this yeah. year. Anyway, Nerd are the outfit. Uh, they're better known as the Neptunes, who are kind sure. of uh, sort of hip-hop R&B producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, this yeah, track yeah, may yeah. have featured on a giveaway CD. It did! The enemy. It did! Anyway, it's Dynamite. It's from the album In Search Of by Nerd, and it's Bobby James. Play it. Nerd from the album In Search Of, and that's Bobby James. It's brilliant. It's great. It's, it's really bit. It reminds me a little bit of um, Warren G. That that chorus. Sure. Yeah. 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 And apparently the album, uh, I don't. It's, it was on kind of limited release, so it's quite tricky to get hold of. But as I say, I think they're re-releasing it. Well, you should tape off the radio because we're doing yeah. lots of features. Yeah. No, I'll maybe play that again in the future. Just tape it off. I'll tell you what. I'll play the whole album over the course of the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and we'll just. Tell, I mean, you know, we'll 
what we're going to have us talk and we just go now and I you mean, can press play and record. I mean we can actually say, we can advocate you tape off the radio because that's breaking No, or maybe I'll just do some bootlegs of the, you know, the yeah. car and just well, sell yeah, them want, Camden you Market it, you know, for yeah. four quid. <laughs> exactly, fine. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we won't, I mean, we, you know, we shouldn't really say that, but... Warren G is, um, Dr. Dre's cousin, is he, or something? Is he, is... Warren is that G, right? I think he's his cousin, yeah. But I, I know he's got a famous brother as well, and I found, I, I think it's like Nate Dogg. It could well be Nate Dogg. We could maybe, someone would know that and could yeah. email you, or phone you, in. Yeah, or email maybe kind of fancy. This is the best thing about being on the um, radio, I can, I can think of something. There was a competition, right, on Virgin, right, I was listening, Virgin, I think 105.4, no, what is it? Oh, I, I can't know. remember. Yeah. Um, good station. Good, good station, yeah. good station. Um, and they had a competition, right, and it was to win a trip to America for the, on the Enterprise. It was all about space. And there was one, there was one question, I had to answer three, right, and it was, who was the first one into space? Yuri Gagarin. Um, who was doing that. And then the third question was, um, how, how much bigger than the moon is the sun? Is it twice as big or four times as big? And this one went four times as big, went correct. It's not. It's hundreds it's of times bigger. More big, I can't yeah. believe, uh, can someone, Look that up on the internet and how many times bigger is the sun than the moon? It's not four times. It's it's huge. It's like beach ball to a pea type dimension. Which DJ was oh. it? Do you remember on Virgin? I can't remember, but it was the one on sort of about eleven o'clock. Oh, 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 oh I wouldn't want to be him now. Yeah, he's embarrassed himself, he's embarrassed isn't he? Himself. Well, we do quizzes. We never get anything wrong. That's true enough. During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't I? Carl goes, do you know how baguettes came about? <laughs> Do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though, I'm thinking, Rick, people are going to be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How did ba baguettes come Whatever about? Whatever he says is going to be good, Stay tuned to XFM to find out. Hives. I hate to say I told you so, so I love that sort of stuff. Mm. That and the strokes. It's so much better than this new metal rubbish, isn't it? Definitely. Now, most people think we talk rubbish on air. Yep. If they could hear the conversations Off that there. go on, I know. But, um, someone just emailed in saying the sun is indeed about 400 times bigger than the moon. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, that, that DJ must have looked up and said, um, 400 times, that can't be right. It's probably, they probably, it's probably printed an error four times. <laughs> yeah. Nothing can be 400 times bigger <laughs> than the moon. Um, <laughs> Carl went, yeah, but uh, the sun, it's only got a million years, isn't it? I went, what? He went, on that space program, it said that in a million years, the sun will be destroyed. And he said, and then we're all shafted. <laughs> right? I went, I laughed. Steve went, no, it's okay. By then, we'll be on another planet. <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. true. We'll have colonized planets. Right. Planet. Carl went, yeah, but there'd be no sun. Steve went, well, there's other suns, which is true. Carl went, well, I went, well, yeah, ev every star is a sun. Carl went, mm, well, not, not really. <laughs> not really. You don't believe that, <laughs> do you? And I went, no, it is. The sun is just a star. It's not even a particularly big star. Carl went, well, why didn't they say that instead of worrying me? <laughs> Instead of worrying me. In a million years time. Yeah. I love yeah. Carl, he's been preserved, brought back to life, but he's now the ruler of the world. Just a head in yeah. a fish tank. <laughs> and he speaks like this. I am Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> the reason, the reason you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah come on the then. What, how, uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is gonna be someone uh, cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said, oh, I can still make a sandwich out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you. Like, no, 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 no. Go on then. Um, right. Napoleon, when he was at war and that with, um, Russia. Uh-huh. 1812, yeah. Yeah. All his soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take, take some clothes in your bag with you because it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be Chilly. nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So, um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Still they were told, Thought, oh, it's Napoleon for Christ's sake. No I'm room for any food. No You're food joking. Food. So, Can um, they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it won't fit because I've got all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I can see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> is there a baguette shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true! <laughs> no, it's not! I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read these? scrawled on the wall in graffiti? Yeah. Do you know the upper was it also meet me here for Cockburn <laughs> at 12 o'clock? <laughs> the upper cross sandwich <laughs> shop, Euston station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know how it says like, <laughs> sail on at Dixon's, whatever? Yeah. 
next to that there was like a bit of information, once you've read the stuff on Dixon- Baguette information. There was- there was a big thing about <laughs> the history of the baguette. <laughs> I read it and I thought, ah. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we gotta- we gotta make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> But how can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your uh, track? Although it would be intimidating, you see them coming, you go, sacre bleu, look at the size <laughs> of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, I I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. You couldn't do that. Well, the Earl of Sandwich- Do you Sandwich, question anything the Earl, you read? If it's now, printed up, is that, yeah. like, fact for you then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like, <laughs> it's not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? Things so that's, funny that's, when that's, not. that's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted something he could fit down his pants. <laughs> and uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. I am. Because the cordage pasty is so they could drop it down the mines, isn't it? Is it? They, yeah, they wrapped it up in a, they wrapped up like meat and vegetables in pastry and they sort of crimped it and it was like a little, and they dropped it down the mines, so. Yeah, that's how that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then eat afterwards. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of that. That is true, Carl. Well, anyway. Like Carl and Bluff. Is yeah. That true? Yeah. They're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> well, uh, it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it? Down not him. his trousers, not him. His no, soldiers. His men. Yeah. Fascinating information. Fascinating bread information, Carl. Radio Ed. Yeah. Now this is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's let down uh, off OK Computer. It's one of my favourite radio host tracks. It's lovely. Right. Set the tape going now. If you want to tape yeah. you know, these songs. Avalanches, frontier psychiatrists. Absolutely. Well, we've had lots of emails. Um, people, obviously, we inflamed uh, and provoked well, actually, about the, the, the Cornish pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle because obviously the mines had dirty hands and they'd eat the, all the stuff in the pasty and they'd be left with this sort of crust and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was a like, apple, mm -hmm. so you have a little sweet as well. A little dessert. So, there you go. You noticed how, like, over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, when no. we ask about hip hop, no. or their, you know, opinions on that, anything no. important. No. But, start talking about pasties. Yeah. We've had about five phone calls. Yeah. And like, someone, someone phoned up to confirm. So they used to work for Upper Crust, and uh, basically, Carl got all excited. So, uh, so it is true. Well, I don't know if it's true. I've, I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it, there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread, and it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality. Yeah. Um, and then Napoleon kind of um, made sure it was a particular, he kind of set in. in yeah, in, in, obviously on the bread you can eat anything you find in the garden, mm. frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. The interesting, th the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, it was Steve. It upper crust, people. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, nearly, nearly 200 it. years, that is a top secret. Somehow Houston Station upper crust got hold of a document, <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly Napoleon's, <laughs> could have been Josephine's. Unfortunately, jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, so I cannot believe I left a note. <laughs> if he talked like that. He did. He did, he did that, yeah, yeah, he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, it's there was one thing that, there was a funny French accent, do you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still made, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. it's very complicated He would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard the shit. Oh yeah. Now that's passing by the say, door. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock mm. because that I'm just saying I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French, Carl. Do, do, you, do, you know what, do you know what I mean? That's the rule. Do you know why people tinkle the tink the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What would it make a different noise? Nope. 
Brilliant. <laughs> Go on, explain what it. You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't, Steve. You explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on. Oh, I've started, so I'll finish. Go on, Carl. Explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> Film reviews. <laughs> Years ago. Welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> Keep going, Carl. Keep I, going. I like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, <laughs> it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, isn't it? <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you were trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm. Where is you now? <laughs> Yeah, go on, no, come on. Biz, bi bi business men. <laughs> business men, no, business men with money. I've got to drink and ching. Okay, so then, we'll so they'd, drink. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the, whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. Go, oh, yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah. So, yeah. rather than like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute. It could be poisoning me here and trying to like, nick me business idea. Yeah, yeah. So what they'd do, it, it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass and you get that tink noise and that's like, like, cheers, you know. No, no, no Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're absolutely right that they would then test each yeah. other's drinks to see that, show that it wasn't poison, but over the years that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. Mm. They just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's good. <sighs> It was exhausting though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it, do you think? Well, I, I like that, because people carry that with them now. When they do that, they think, oh, that bloke's definitely not trying to poison me. Yeah. So the, the horrible thing is that now, when they do the glasses, I can laugh and go, they don't know I've poisoned them. <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. <laughs> it's a shortcut, it's a slippery slope. You know, just be careful. <laughs> There's a star. One of my bands of 2001, Ash. Was it? Yeah, they've come through. I didn't like them at first. Thought, uh, you know, a bit, a bit too lo-fi, but they I think they've, good, yeah. they've worked it. They do good, good songs. They're good performers, and I think they're probably thoroughly nice chaps. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't say hello because we were away for a couple of weeks. We didn't come back and go, oh, we're back, did we? It's like nothing ever happened. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Did um, you have a good Christmas. Yeah, you. Yep. Carl. Yeah, it's alright. Lovely, okay, let's crack on. Good, uh, my, um, I went on holiday after Christmas, yeah? Yeah. And, um, so did, uh, our mutual friend, Phil Bowker. Yeah, good man. He, 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 he was in Lanzarote and he told me one of the funny- I don't know if I can tell this on the radio. I'll have to say the C word, I'll just go, it's in a sentence, so I just go, you, C, when it comes, and you'll know that he's saying the sure. terrible word. Um, just, you know, didn't want to ruin the anecdote. Anyway, uh, they're walking along one evening in Anzari, and there's lots of Brits there, apparently, and Phil overhears uh, a sort of a married couple arguing. They're having to go home a bit early, and she's saying to him, she went, fuck my sake, every time we come out drinking, you always shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. Always, not once. So he's going, ah, oh, I've told you, he said, it's not the drink, it's the weather. She went, the weather. You'll be blaming the food next, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they should have oh. got married. Wow. Or mate, when did you think the shooting itself started? Must have been after the marriage, because if it, if they, you know, you were caught in, and you go, went, went out with that. Uh, uh, Derek again, did you ask that? Yeah, how was it? It was the evening, it was lovely, the meals must be shut himself. Again. That's, that's five dates, five different heaps of shit. But I think I can change him. I think I can change him, yeah. It must have happened after the marrying. Or he just might have think, oh god, I've got, always got to that age where I think, look, I'll just empty it when I get home. Yeah. I'm not gonna keep going up and going to the toilet, you know. It's the ice that does it. Yeah, Carl is right, I think, it is the ice. What do you mean? People forget, you know, they say, oh, don't, don't drink the water when you're on holiday, and they, and they don't, they drink, you know, they buy heavy on and stuff. Oh, I see. They forget about the ice. The ice cubes, you're right in a bar, made from tap water. And that can do it, can it? Yeah. But what, she said every time you're drinking, I, didn't she? I assume that she wasn't drinking ice then. Yeah. Well, what, I mean, why is it just having to do it? Let's be honest, everyone that goes on holiday doesn't end up crapping themselves. Yeah, yeah, they usually make it to a it, toilet. He does it every time he drinks, doesn't he? Yeah, well, apparently. Just don't let him carry the baguettes. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> oh, he's good, isn't he? Oh, Carl comes out with... He one. does now and again. High five, Carl. That was sweet, man. That yeah, sweet. nice one. Yeah, respect you. Right, we've got another feature now. Yes, this is a feature which we introduced before Christmas, and it was so popular, we brought it into 2002 <laughs> as well. Yeah. And it we've carried it over with us. It's, it's an interesting thing. And I don't think... I don't think we'll ever run out of features for yeah, it. I don't think so. Go on, then what's the feature called, Steve? It's brilliantly, it's rather brilliantly called A Song That I Like. Yeah. And in it, let me explain. Go on, go on. What I do is, in it, I play a song. What, um, that you like, or? That I like. Oh, right, yeah. so you just pick a few, oh, well, hmm, let me, I'm going to explain this. All the songs, right, there are, Carl, Steve likes some of them, he doesn't like others. Exactly. But, for this particular feature, the only songs that will be in this section will be the ones that he likes. If you think you're going to hear songs that I don't like, you're wrong. <laughs> Let me clear that up straight away. Yeah. Songs that I like. What song have you chosen to play? Thank you very much for asking. I have chosen, and it's something I've only been introduced to recently, but I did enjoy it, and it seemed, um, you know, c just felt contemporary. It's, uh, pa Patti Smith and the classic... Oh, yeah. fantastic. Play. Gloria by Patti Smith. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I love it. I've, 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 I've always been one of my favourite tracks. And as Carl pointed out, sounds remarkably like, uh, who did you mention? PJ Harvey. Harvey. Oh yeah, well, well yeah, everyone knew that. Oh, she was obviously very influenced by her. Uh, that's fine, that's fine. That's alright, yeah. that's allowed. That's, that's cool. I like PJ Harvey too. Exactly. There's enough room for two. You're absolutely right! <sighs> Oh, here we let's are just, Let's just take a moment to think about what we've done, you know. <laughs> yeah, well it's been good, it's yeah, uh, we've enjoyed it's, it's an hour and twenty minutes, we've, we've, we've talked about, um, oh, shit in yourself. <laughs> we've talked about pasties. We've done, done pasties, we've done pasties. A, a number of pastries, actually. Um, we did never got the, um, we should go in a competition, who's the, who's the, um, tastiest cartoon ever. Well, actually, I threw up g Terra. I threw up, um, Jessica Rabbit. I've had some people contribute here go on, on email, um, we've got someone here, Dom has, uh, emailed us, he's told us that, uh, for him, Daphne, from Scooby Doo, yeah, always popular, popular choice. Popular and choice. And obviously, this is one I've uh, I've never quite understood. Wilma from the Flintstones. <laughs> I've actually always felt that Wilma. I don't know. I just thought she was a bit. No, not a bit Wilma. Older. Betty, surely. Yeah, yeah, Betty. Well, this is what I'm hearing. Wilma. I mean, yeah, Betty, surely. But Wilma. No, no I mean, she's just like homely. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, oh, yeah. come on, Steve, you wouldn't say no to Wilma. Yeah, I suppose not. If it was well, I'd be worried about Fred, if he found out. <laughs> I would, well, I'd hate to do it, you know. I don't want to do it to Fred, he's a good guy. He is, isn't he? He's, he's, he's a bit of a jump. Whereas, where, whereas Barney, to be honest, I don't yeah. think he deserves Betty. Do they both work in the quarry? <laughs> <laughs> because... I mean, let's be honest, Fred, not a smart man. Like, I mean, he also uh, didn't come out of, uh, of rock school with anything uh, other than a couple of basic O-levels. I know, but he's a hard, he's, he, you know, he's a hard working sound sort of but guy. they got a big house, they got like a TV, they got that bird thing. Yeah. They I mean, I, I, be honest, if I was Fred, I would be a little bit disappointed that my kid does nothing, whereas Barnes can lift up sort of tall buildings. Sure. Bam, bam. He's yeah, a very yeah. strong... You know. I mean, interestingly, <laughs> um, Fred loves his job. He's always yabba dabba doing at the end of the day. <laughs> he does yabba dabba. He's the whole day lifting rocks from one place to another. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't take that from that cat, though. <laughs> I would. If a cat picked me up by the scruff neck and put me out, yeah. right, on the doorstep, Damn I'd right. go mental, I'd get rid of it. Get it rid is of a saber toothed tiger, though, Carl, so it could rip him to shreds. It's not like a normal domestic cat you have nowadays. You know when they go to the drive in? At the beginning. Yeah. And they order, um, maybe some ribs. Yeah, that huge, that huge rib, and it tips yeah. the car over. Yeah. Was that her first day on the job? <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, I've got... never been ordered before. Yeah, or I always thought or, she'd have realised or, that. Or, yeah, we're out of pig, we, we've got Brontosaurus rib. Exactly. And he goes, won't that knock the car over? <laughs> no, it won't. I don't know. Rick, can I tell you now, that was an accident waiting to happen. It was really, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah and it did. Oh, dear. Mind you, I had a, I went in te to Texas once, and I had some ribs, and it was like the Flintstones, it was huge. And not only did it look too much like an animal that I couldn't actually eat it, I don't know who could eat it. I mean, seriously, it was two foot long, yeah. and all the rib, it was like half a rib cage. And I it's just... incredible. My friends were lived in Texas for a while, and they uh, they once were in a kind of diner, and there was um, you know those kind of benches that are attached to the table uh, yeah. itself, like a kind of picnic bench. Yeah. And uh, this huge fat guy came in, he came wobbling, and he ordered like this kind of everything you can eat meal, and his fat kind of sort of you know kind of his like, big fatty fatty stuff. fat, and his fatted exactly. on the fat table. It, yeah. ra it, it wrapped itself around the uh, table and everything. Oh, he was God. chowing down, and when he tried to leave. The table came up with him. Oh no! Imagine that! I mean, they are fat, aren't they? They're big people. They're yeah. huge people. But it was that thing we talked about before that um, uh, bloke on Jerry Springer stove was like 80 stone, right? Mm. Now, I felt quite sorry for him. He was really sad and he was crying. It is rad, but my point is this, right? When he got to say 50 stones, sure. didn't he go, that's too much that's for, enough. for a 
for a land animal. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's big, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I'm getting worried. I'm 13 stone, and I'm genuinely getting worried. I'm thinking, oh, Yeah, God. when you've got that big, when you've actually got your own mare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, you have, when you have to get in helpers to, to w look what the scale says. Yeah. Like, they got four or five people lift up your belly and go, it's 52 stone. You go, that's too much. <laughs> exactly. That's too, I'm going to only have nine breakfasts When you actually, today. when you begin to appear on the ordnance survey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. When You've you got your own symbol. It's like, we can see two things from space now, Fatty and Steve Merchant. <laughs> we'll be landing right, right about. Well, no, I'm just saying you're yeah. not fat, are you? You're freakish and big. Just yeah. another quick thought. They, someone's mentioned Daphne from Scooby-Doo, and I've, yeah. but I've always had a soft spot for Velma. Velma. Because Velma's oh, the no. glasses. I mean, I'd have- I'd have She's had, clever. Can I tell you what would have happened if I was in that environment? I was maybe on the- Your machine. glasses would have got tangled no, up. No, I'd have always had an art- I'd always been making a play for Daphne, right? And I- Velma would have fancied me, but yeah. I'd have always ignored it because I was playing for Daphne. And then when I finally realised it was never gonna happen with Daphne, I'd have blown it with Velma. Maybe not though, like. maybe not, maybe not. It, 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 sometimes those, you know, they, they might, you know, appreciate honesty and go, listen, I've been hitting on the good looking one. <laughs> Oi, oi, four eyes. Yeah. Do you fancy it, Chubbs? <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Just being honest is what you're saying. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, I don't mean to be libelous, but Velma, she was quite short, the glasses, the short hair. Lesbian. Hung around <laughs> with the dog and Lesbian. The I'm beginning to wonder if she yeah. was, maybe. I, I was like, see, unfortunately I said lesbian there and you still carried on with your assessment of what it is to be a lesbian. It's bad yeah. enough doing the cliches of having short hair, but you said the dog. Yeah, well she hangs around with a dog. So do lesbians do that? Well, have you seen some uh, lesbians? They're right, dogs. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I've done there? You know what I've done there, Rick. Comedy oh, award God. winning. Oh, God. <laughs> I was having a cup of tea. Hundred reasons there on XFM 104.9, just gone half two. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. Hi. All right. Rick, we've get, got a couple of emails in here, and they're saying they enjoyed your performance over the Christmas period on a programme called A uh, Hundred Greatest TV Moments. Yeah. Did you do an interview or something? What was the deal? I, I didn't see this. Uh, yeah, the office was in there, wasn't it? And I right. was interviewed for it. But what are they talking about? With your, they enjoyed your performance. <laughs> Come on, you know, do you? No, I don't. it's the thing that I did on Razzmatazz. Oh, is this uh, where they found a clip? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all right, I was in a band and we had one single out or something, and I did one TV appearance when I was about oh god, and they showed a bit of it about seven seconds me on Razzmatazz. <laughs> oh god, Razzmatazz. For with, those that don't remember, with, it was like a kind of I suppose what was it like a kind kids. of CD UK of its time? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, oh god, and it was yeah, it was the, of the time sort of new romantic and, and I, they showed a clip of this i looked about 10 and about five stone with hair and makeup and girly clothes my sister actually said i look like posh spice <laughs> brilliant which is there's a funny story about that, right? because we were rushed and we had to do this thing and we um oh god and we were meant to take a flight to newcastle and where the, were you traveling from london uh, yeah but we we got there we didn't have tickets we were told we were there, but the a and r man overslept Right, for the record company, overslept and it was terrible and we were fretting and eventually, it was too late to get the plane, we missed the plane, we had to get a train and it was really kind of fine, they were back and forth they were going, yeah, if they come now we can still do it, we're going to miss it and this was like a big promotional thing and we got there and they went, I, I oh, <laughs> God, right? And I had this sort of like jumpsuit I was wearing that I'd cut off, put that on backwards. <laughs> a jumpsuit? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. I know, it was, Is it this was what bad. Is clip? Yeah. Uh, I had that on back to front and there was no time and I think I even mind wrong at one point and it was awful but the funny story is this that when <laughs> we were there we didn't have our tickets this was at the airport we bumped into Buck's Fizz <laughs> the, 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 the guys and girls from Buck's Fizz and their manager so there's like five of them right and there's two of us and they had five tickets and this and Buck's Fizz tried to smuggle us through <laughs> and so, they, so they went through the things right and they went tickets please and he just waved five tickets that he had like that goes this is us right and they went well can I have a look at them and they went there's only five here and they went they just looked at us and went sorry lads we tried we tried we were try we were nearly oh. smuggled through by Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> Carol. They couldn't even, even with their powers, they were the height of their powers. that was like, was that really, that was they'd the they believed time. They'd already, yeah, they'd already done making your mind <laughs> up. I thought if anyone can get us through customs check, it was the Fizz. 
but even the fizz what I like could though, not that get That reassures through. me, I have to say, about kind of airplane travel. Yeah. You know, with these kind of troubled times, it's yeah. nice to know that even What's someone that? like Bugs Fizz yeah. couldn't get, you know, smuggle someone through. That's good, because even, you know, the t top security man went, hold on, there's five in the fizz, <laughs> there's five tickets, <laughs> those two lads are not going through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that makes you more secure about Definitely. air travel now. Well, it's lovely if I'm in America, you know, and I see five star, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. trying to get through customs. With two other lads. Exactly, exactly. I think, wait a minute, what's going on there? Yeah. Wait a minute, security guy stopped him, it's fine. It's fine, yeah. You know there's only about five in five star. Oh. It's lovely, it's lovely to know that. Yeah. I love the fact, did you, did you know the fizz previously? Of course not. first run in with the fizz? No, they were, they were doing, um, they were doing, uh, the Taz, same as us, they were doing the old Raz, same and as did us. They, did you recognise the fizz and go, oh my god, that's the fizz, let's try and sneak in with them, or did they recognise you? How did it work? They wouldn't have recognised that. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Would you, I love the, the audacity of going up to Buck's Fizz and saying, trying to smuggle us in. Can <laughs> <laughs> you try and break aviation law for us? Now, you, now, yeah, now it's time to make your mind up. We're going to the land of make believe. I did that and they laughed, they went yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you through, lads. Yeah. Just stay tight. Um, I, I was actually uh, on top of Bobby's shoulders in a long coat. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, but Bill. Well, seriously though, I don't understand how what their plan was to. to you. Like they would have gone, yep, yeah, through. <laughs> it's the fizz, lamb through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no bother checking the. It's like, it was not wasn't even answering. We couldn't even get to Newcastle. Do you get think it was wearing your jumpsuit backwards that sort of gave it away? Well, no, but see, I didn't have it on then. I was uh, I was just in service. I just had jeans and a t-shirt then. <laughs> I didn't even have my hair gelled. I was just wow. like cash. I then. saw it. I thought it looked all right. Did you? Did you? Yeah, well, no. I mean for. <laughs> <laughs> then you. Yeah, tight jumpsuit. Nice. Yeah. Cheekbones. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had some cheekbones, yeah. yeah. That was the, that was If anyone difference. else saw it, or maybe they tested no, it and they've got a clip, because I'd love to see it, I missed it. Well, let's, I'll get you one. So if you have it, put it, I'll tell you what, why not create a website, um, and put that clip on there, on a constant loop, and then send the address in and I'll give it out, and people can check it out for themselves. Yeah, maybe. brilliant. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. I'll have to lose weight now. Yeah. That film. Oh, now we come to the feature. We've, we're carrying this over 2002 because it was such a great success. Everyone's l talking about it. I, do you remember I stopped my film reviews because I'm only doing films I like and I've done all the films I like. That's where other film reviewers fail. <laughs> sure. Because they review for substandard films. <laughs> exactly. My average is still nine and a half out of ten. Yeah. yeah. And no one's beaten that. Not Barry Norman, not Jonathan Ross. No one's got an average of nine and a half out of ten <laughs> for the true. films they reviewed. So I'm keeping it there. I don't want to drop my standards. Mm. However, that film sounds good. This is where I pick a classic track from a film that I might not have seen, right? But I like the song, I might go and see the film. This is, um, Almost Famous. The film was Almost Famous. I haven't seen film. it. I haven't seen it, right? But, a song, now don't panic, listen without prejudice, it's Elton John, but it's when he was good, okay? When he was a bright, funky, young, Brit glam star, wonderful song, wonderful tune, wonderful lyrics, it's Tiny Dancer. Rebel Motorcycle Club there, Steve. What's about it? That's it, isn't it? We've it's had fun. some laughs, haven't we? We've learned as well. We've been educated as ever. Yeah, past years, all that, that. We've got baguette information. We've had some features such as, that film sounds good. Exactly. Song, song that I like. Song for the lovers. Uh, song for the ladies. Song for the ladies coming up very shortly. Rick, I was lucky enough this week to go to a exclusive press preview of Britney Spears' forthcoming movie, Crisscross or yeah. Crossroads. Crossroads, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it's not related to the popular TV show. Right. Rick, I sh I'm assuming you'd, you'd love me to do a little review of it now. I can't because it's no, embargoed until March. I can only talk about it no. in March. No, Otherwise, I wouldn't, no. the press people will go crazy. No, I don't. I, I wouldn't want you to. Well, no. I imagine you want to know all about Crossroads. Not really. Because I cannot tell you anything. Well, don't then. I mean, just <laughs> well, fine, you can it. ask me questions. You can pump me for information. I cannot tell you anything about it until March. I would pump you for no reason ever. No. But really, Certainly not for information. Carl, doesn't matter what you ask me about Britney Spears <laughs> Crossroads, I cannot tell you anything about it. Alright. Okay? Okay. But seriously, if you want to know the plot or what I think of it, I cannot discuss it. <laughs> okay? And if the listeners want to email in questions, they can, I cannot reply. Okay. Until March. So, hang on for that. I've seen the film already, I've already <laughs> seen the film myself. <laughs> In advance of everyone else, yeah. I can't tell anyone about it. Right. Until March, that's the kind of excuse. I'll tell you what though, maybe I'll review it in March. No, you can't. Why? Because you haven't seen it, and I have. <laughs> yeah. If you want to ask me, qu ask me a question now about it. Well, actually, in March. 
Yeah, Not but if you wanted to know now, you couldn't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> right. Song for the lovers. Yeah. <laughs> ladies, anyway, sorry. Song for the ladies this week. Um, I was lucky enough to um, get given as a Christmas gift the uh, Rolling Stones Complete Singles Collection. Good and present. I, good what else is an absolute joy? And I was f I'd forgotten how brilliant Wild Horses. Oh, great is, track uh, from the Stones. So I thought I'd play that this week for the ladies. Let's leave them with that. Jagger and Richards at their best. Beautiful. <laughs> Watts is in on it. <laughs> if <laughs> I, if yeah. I know Watts, eh? I, I mean, Wyman was still <laughs> there those <laughs> days. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. XFM 104.9, kicking off there with a the Dandy Warhol Steve. Sure. The Ricky Gervais Show, with, with me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Well, they always let me say that. Well, oh, I thought you were... What? Well, five past one, isn't it? Already an error has occurred. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, because yeah. it could have been slick. But, Steve, we've got some great music. I've been on a bit of a soul tip this week, Are to be really? honest. Yeah, I was right. a bit of a, a folky last week, but, mm. you know, you got stuff from, like, uh, you know, early, early Bowie, some Stevie Wonder, a sure. little bit of Groove Armada. We've got the, we've got the classics, we've got Coldplay, we've got Blur, we've got Ash. Sure. We sure. haven't planned anything for the show. Haven't got nothing, any, have you? You're no, just, just reading, reading the list of songs, list of songs that I might Thinking that play. will fill up some time. Oh, <laughs> no. Anything interesting happen to you over the week? Um... Nope. No, I just swore off air, and yeah. Carl went, never swear in an on-air studio. <laughs> I love it when Carl tries to sound like he, he's professional and understands the business. Yeah. You don't fool us, Carl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. I wish I could buy, I wish I could buy, like, a Carl, you know, like, those Garfields you can stick on a car window? Oh, yeah. I reckon they should be, we should be able to get a car like that, that we could send out as a gift to people. That'd be lovely, wouldn't just it? Just this little face pressed up against the glass, like a window licker. Yeah. Like, he would have to lick his face to stick it Yeah. Then. That'd be a joy. Oh, oh bless, bless him. him. Or one of the things you throw out a window and it sort of like flaps down, you say, they sell them for a quid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, or those little dancing dance Baby cars. pigeons. That's what we used yeah. to use. Or frogs sure. from the pond. Sure. Yeah. It's cruelty to animals and I don't condone that and it was a joke before the RSPCA phone in and say stop throwing frogs at windows. Well, um, people who are listening... Really I don't mean the French, by the way. That, is, that sounds like xenophobic before... The, the, someone calls in and says, stop throwing French people at windows. Yeah. So I'm digging myself into a yeah. hole here, aren't I? Yeah. It's all gone horribly Quick, wrong. mention the Germans and then this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the Germans. Oh, good. Um, Carl, uh... I was just saying, I wonder if people know what Carl looks like in the, in the wide world. Is there any reason why they should have you ever seen sort of, anything or... He's like Moby, he looks like Moby. He does look like Moby. Yeah. That's yeah. Really yeah. Nice. Does that help? Is that a compliment? Sort of a Moby who's... Mank. Had a bit of a tough paper around when he was younger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. a bit more knackered than Moby. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. See, I, 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 I think Moby's great. He's one of those people, that every opens his mouth, I sort of, oh, I'd love to be mates with him. He talks sense, he's interesting, he's lovely. I don't like his records. Mm. There's nothing I can do about that. If I ever meet, if I ever come top mates with him, and after about a few years of us, like, driving around and having a party, I go, oh, I, I'll go, Moby, I've never liked anything you've ever done. Mm. Is I that what you do with your mates? <laughs> just drive round? <laughs> What are you, 16? Never. <laughs> go, I've never go done to, that. Go to a car park and just do handbrakes. Never. Through. I haven't done that since I was like 17 when like it was great to <laughs> so, someone had a car. You couldn't believe that you were just moving. Yeah. I remember once, right, my mate, um, uh, Bob had a car and there was me and another friend in it and uh, we were young, we were about sort of 18, and uh, he did a U-turn when he shouldn't and, a, and this um, motorbike hit him and came off and the music it was just turning music down. It was really, really bad, right? And he was there and he was really worried and the motorbike bloke was dazed. And he went, you okay, I'm really sorry, and the bloke said, yeah. And I put my head out the window and went, sorry about that, mate. That's the third one today. <laughs> and this man, I just looked at him and he went, no, don't do that, Gervais. Why did you do that? Why did you say that? I just thought it would be funny. I didn't really understand the, uh, yeah, you know, the yeah. severity of this. Have so I told on the radio before about that time when I, when I just passed my test and I was driving my parents' Volvo estate? And we yeah. went off driving down some country lanes. Have I Is mentioned this the that? one with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you, have I? Yeah. Have I told I, you, Carl? No, no, go well, on. maybe I'll tell you a bit oh, later let's on. Oh, let's play a record. Yeah, record. There's, there's, there's a great anecdote about yeah. a Volvo estate coming up. <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of stuff you're getting on XFM this Saturday afternoon. Do you want some Coldplay or what? Oh, I'd love to. Bones sinking like stones, all that Coldplay. Don't panic. <laughs> oh. That's the title of the song as well as what I was saying. <laughs> In fact, I was just saying the title of the song, yeah. if I'm being honest, making it sound like it was Conversation yeah. XFM 104.9. Uh, Sir Ricky Gervais Show, with Steve Merchant. Thanks. Um, you were going to tell us a little story about just a Volvo Just passed my test. Yeah. My parents had a big, big Volvo estate, and it's quite a big oh, car to drive. Sure. My parents didn't have a car. <laughs> 
But if you, I know you don't drive cars, Rick, but no. it's quite a big car to drive if you just passed your test. It's safe though, isn't it? It is very safe, that was the thing. Yeah. And, uh, I live, come from, uh, the West Country, obviously, there's quite a lot of windy lanes. No, lane, no. you joking, do you? <laughs> they have cars there. <laughs> well, here he comes. <laughs> Blimey, Carl. Learn on a tractor, automatic it was. Do you want me to tell it or not? Oh! Don't, don't <laughs> up the accent! Oh no, I've got a horse, oh, go on. Oh. <sighs> Go on. So I went to this party. You never got him being from the north. Not when he's telling an anecdote. He's never telling an anecdote. Oh yeah, fair point. <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, so I went to a party and I was quite excited because I had the car, I had the motor, and there was a chick heading down to the party that I was like, you know, I had my eye on. And yeah. I thought, you know, now I've got a car and uh, going to the party, it's going to be amazing, right? <laughs> you blast and like various, it, various friends had said, like, can we get a lift? I thought, yeah, groovy. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, pick yeah, up yeah. the chick as well, who's yeah, a friend yeah, of a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cruising down to the party in the motor, you know, the Volvo estate, and there's nothing sexier than that. You know, slipping a little bit of uh, Billy Joel on the uh, stereo or whatever. Oh, something don't classy. Go <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, um,. Or maybe it was, uh, Billy Ocean. Oh. I, I, had a, I was quite a Billy. Maybe Billy it was Ocean. get out of my dreams, get into my car. Ideally. Yeah. So I get to the party, and, uh, inevitably it was one of those house parties where the, the chick that I had my eye on, uh, she kind of was chatting to other guys, and she wasn't really paying attention to me, and I, and I was, I was sort of... Fine out to get, was she again? <laughs> oh, oh, same old story. Oh, they make me laugh. They know laugh. how to tease, don't they, they, they the ladies? Oh, they kidding. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I'd follow her like a dog, you know, from room to room. Yeah. And uh, watch Quite her while... Quite literally, sometimes he was barking. Yeah. <laughs> to, 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 and while, uh, you know, just watch her while she talked to other blokes. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously I wasn't, because I, I was driving, I wasn't drinking, so I was not really enjoying myself. And then somebody said, should we go and pick up Vera? And I thought, right, okay, and they went, Steve's got a car, let's all leap in there, we'll go pick up Vera. Mm. And this girl was like up for it as well, so I thought, brilliant, you know, I'll be back in the car with her, you know, away yeah, from yeah, all these, uh, yeah, these yeah, lads. Yeah. One guy she had her eye on, he came as well, I was a little bit annoyed. Yeah. But anyway, he's in the car, so I'm driving down these country lanes, just driving along, and they're directing me, they're saying, go left here, go right. And then suddenly, we stop, and, um, he goes, one of them goes, uh, just drive into that field, this pitch black field, right? And I'm sort of, well, it is my parents' car. Just drive in the field, Steve. I'm thinking, well, I don't want to, like, not seem like I'm a hard, cool, crazy kind of guy, because the chick's in the car. So I drove the car into the field, they all let out, started running off into the darkness, shouting, Vera, 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 where are you? So I'm just sort of sat there in the car waiting. Wasn't well, Vera Lynn, was it? Because she likes to hide in fields. <laughs> Bizarrely, it wasn't. Right. It was just, I was just left in the car uh, on my own with uh, Billy Ocean. And uh, suddenly, out of the darkness, they come back holding a Vietnamese pot-bellied pig that they had stole from a, no, a, a nearby farm. Stole and they knew, that, they knew that the pig uh, was called Vera, because someone knew the farmer or something. Anyway, so they got this pig, so now they're going, oh, put the pig in the back of the car, we'll take it back to the party, it'll be hilarious. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not sure I want a pig and all its, you know, piggy crap in the car, right, crammed in there. But they say, yeah, so obviously I'm thinking again, I don't want to look like I'm, you know, a nerd. You know, I'm terrified of that, Rick, ever had. Yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah. So, uh... So you go, hey, bring the pig into the car. <laughs> exactly. I'm exactly. no nerd. Exactly. Yeah, go on. Um, so now we drive off again, I've got this pig kind of screeching in the back of the car. And, uh, they say, stop again, stop again, let's do some cow tipping. And they do that old thing, you know, about the fact, because cows sleep standing up, don't they? So you, you can push a cow over and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a wild time, hilarious. So this time, uh, now we get to a sort of dead end in the, in the road, and, uh, they say, well, turn around, let's go back to the party. And I'm thinking, fine. Try and do a three-point turn in this very narrow country lane, right? Get the Volvo Estate wedged horizontally across the road. Can't get it out, just can't seem to sort it out. I don't know what, I'm just, I'm now I'm panicking because there's a pig in the car, right? And, uh, local disgruntled farmers, right? People drunk, partying, probably off their head on some kind of weed, really. Well, there, was it loads of blokes with, like, pitchforks and flaming torches <laughs> going, burn him. <laughs> He's playing with our pig. Exactly that. And, uh, and so that, do you know, I was so terrified that my, well, all I could think was they're going to have to send a helicopter yeah. to lower a magnet onto the top of the car to lift the car up and put it r the right way around. You used to re read a lot of comics, didn't you? Yeah. 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 So, uh, do you know what I started doing? What? Crying. Did you really? Yeah. Why? So I started crying, just very slightly, started getting upset, and the the other guy that the girl fancied, he had to get into the driving seat and sort it out for me by oh slowly no. edging forward so and backwards. that's the worst bit of the whole story. Yeah, edging slowly back and forwards, he just sorted it out, just slowly, 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 worked the car back round, and then we were off. You were just gently weeping. Just gently weeping in the, the back. the bloke had just taken the bird that you saw from a distance. <laughs> exactly. That was basically your wife in your head by then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wasn't it? I can't believe it. We were happily it. married with a pig for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. joke, that could happen. I know. Um, Do, um the pigs come, if you like. Sorry? <laughs> what? what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> when you do what, Carl? What? What? What did you say? 
<laughs> then what did you say? Because I don't want to have to go to the Raid Authority again. You're what did you say then? <laughs> just remember, just remember, just We remember, are going out live, Carl. Yeah, remember Tom Benz, right? What did you say? <laughs> what I'm saying is, why were they shouting Vera? Because pigs don't come to the name, <laughs> do they? Hey? <laughs> You I know, don't know the ins and outs of a of pig, you know, have how to lure a pig into your trap. Can I just tell you some very, very interesting things about pigs? Please do. Right. One, they have, a, everyone knows they have a corkscrew shaped like penis, right? Yeah, a corkscrew shaped yeah. penis. Yeah, That's yeah. the tail, isn't it? Two, they can't look up. They can't put their head back and look up, right? Three, <laughs> they can have a 30 minute orgasm. Yeah. Rick, is it only pigs that have got a corkscrew shaped penis? <laughs> <laughs> no, and landlords. <laughs> okay. Very handy. Right. Here's, um, here's one for you. Go on. Like insect facts and stuff. Go on. Um, if mm. a man was a flea, he could jump over St Paul's Cathedral. No. What? Wrong. It's gone up now. It's <laughs> <laughs> the big wheel. The big wheel. <laughs> it's the gone Millennium up wheel. now. It's gone up now. Play a record. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, there's a star on XFM 104.9. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl text messaged me in the week, very excited, because he just watched a programme that proved me and you were stupid. Remember when we, we, um, we sort of championed the anti-supernatural? Yes. We, skeptical view. We, we're just absolutely skeptical about things like that. Um, um, we're, we're atheists, we don't believe in ghosts, anything like that, anything supernatural. We're, we're very... We're, we're followers of James Randi, a, a genius of our times, but Carl saw something that proved us wrong. I'd like Carl to tell you what this proof was, what he saw on, and, uh, look at him. Go on then. It was, on, it was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching, I, you see, the problem is I didn't get the full story, so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. But and, and like your usual investigations <laughs> into the supernatural. <laughs> Which are It was right. called, can I just say what the programme's called? Mr. Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> so, Sounds bit, like an academic work to me. Yes. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, I, I stopped seeing what's on the telly and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else and I watch it and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll have a bit of this. And, um, there was an old woman and, and a daughter and as far as I, I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's, it's dreadful and, unless you've been through it. You know, you've had ghosts in your house and that. You really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. The budgie was getting stressed? Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> Did it, did it, did it explain that to people, or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I said and it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, you know, it normally swings on its little perch and that. And it's just depressed, because it was right. possessed. It was just sat around in its, uh, in its pyjamas. <laughs> so, <sorry. laughs> No, no, yeah. no. Come on, so, Steve. Yeah, Come on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. So, <laughs> the budgie was depressed because he could sense the ghost. Yeah. And yeah. then, so, yeah. this, yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mr. Uh, Exorcist came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he, a, was he a, a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I picked did he, did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? That's, that's usually the... He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. No, sure. Okay. But, so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing. Yeah. And, um, and then... And was he trying, was he trying, was he trying to exercise the budgie? Oh, no, no, the, the, the ghost. House. Right, the so, house, so it yeah. wasn't that the budgie had a demon or anything. No. Out. Okay. No, so this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward, it wasn't a poltergeist or anything, it was just a... Well, it's a haunted house. Yeah. Yeah, but sure. that, that's the thing he was saying. He was saying you can have, like, your ghouls and that, that aren't that bad, that aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, obviously yeah. The, the budgie, they've, they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and <laughs> sure. And so, they so he, go on, so he's a so, so anyway, basically, he sorted it out, did whatever he did, and then uh, the next shot you see is, like, the budgie making a noise and swinging it's it over the moon again, and the, the old woman was, like, happy, because she was She couldn't believe it, yeah. And that's Does the it. priest didn't come in and go, well... You should feed that bird. <laughs> Give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, See you later. No, it was a. So it's it's budge I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and they, they, you know, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly <laughs> yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going. I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Though? No. Do you know no. you can have like moody 
a moody dog. You can you can see a dog when it's on happy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically, so that for you is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed. <laughs> wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its, you know. And uh, like a, <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man Just, came in and did whatever he did. Yeah, uh, he's Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> was, <laughs> this wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there is. Um, Just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they're they playing up for the camera. Yeah, you know, a be, budgie could possibly act like that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No, or not like telly. not like Lassie. No, sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah, or so, champion the Wonder Horse. So yeah. What do you think? Um. I think... I've changed, well I've changed my tune Rick, I don't uh, know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. I'd love to get Mr. Exorcist in. Wouldn't that be amazing? Never dabble with things you don't understand. Sorry. Like women. See what I did there? <laughs> Turn that back on me. Blur. Boys and girls. Girls and boys. Embarrassed yourself. Blur. Girls and boys there, Steve, on XFM 104.9. So, uh, it's not so, so bad, really, because we didn't plan the thing, you know. No, we've, no, uh, we've, we've proved the supernatural, we were wrong about that. Well, I just, just one other question, was there anything else in this woman's house that led her to believe that there were ghosts, or was it just the fact that, you know, Tweety, or whatever his name was, wasn't chirping? You see, this is the problem, I was watching, um, UK Style, I was watching something on that. Right, we wasn't on that. It was, do you know, it's not changing rooms, it's like that, but cheaper. You, you, uh, quite seriously, right, you might be the most interesting man in the world. I, I'm fascinated by it. I'd like to follow you, I'd like to have a hidden camera on you, I'd, I can ask you any question. You know, it's, I'd like to have you in a cupboard in my flat, so I'm going, I just think about it, I wonder what Carl thinks of that. And I'd just throw some at you, and you'd, you know what I mean? Yeah, because that's what my dad did. <laughs> Get me in the cupboard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? Yeah. I, just, like, I wonder what Carl would do. You're never stuck for a conversation point if Carl's around. That's no. the genius about it. He's always got an opinion. He's got an opinion about everything. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's I love the fact he was watching UK style without a shadow of irony. Yeah. No, that's what I like about exactly. him. Exactly. That's what's I wouldn't brilliant. like it if he was trying to be no, 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 he's not. kitsch yeah. and stuff like that. I, I like it because he's down the line, straightforward, no nonsense. Yeah. This is what I like. You know what I mean? He's going to be... He's gonna be sort of like Jeffrey Boycott, Dicky Bird, when he's yeah. about like 60 or 70. He's gonna get on a bus and go to the, um, the driver somewhere, you need an haircut, you look like a scruffy get. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. gonna get, he's gonna be a great old bloke that you- he, does, he doesn't get chinned in the pub. Yeah. Right? People protect him, you know, cause he's like 70 or something. But it, it's great, you're looking forward, you're actually, in that, that nod, I know, that, that nod went, I can't wait till he's 70. Yeah. Wasn't it? Mm. I, yeah. Can I, can I, can I, uh, Make a suggestion that we just get people they can email in just questions or comments they'd like to hear from from uh, Carl. Maybe they just want to know his opinion on the Afghanistan itch situation. Yeah, like or you know, like last night's Coronation Street, whatever. Yeah, like they do it, you know, um, uh, in the enemy or, or imagine that current election. They go, Billy says Labour. Yeah, Ooh, Carl. The Sun has white van man. Each oh, day they interview a guy who drives a white van, sees opinions on various topics. Carl is very much our white man van. White yeah. man van. Yeah. So I any any query you have, I think most of our listeners are, any to be opinion honest. that you would like to hear voiced from the K man, uh, Ricky Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk, or you can phone in. I don't. I forget what the number is. Oh, eight, matter, seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Sweet. Now it's time for our first regular feature of the day. That film sounds good. That film sounds good. good I stopped the good. film reviews because I've done all the films that are nine or yep. ten out of ten. I don't want to yep. drop my standards. Absolutely. Uh, this is a feature where. It's a soundtrack of a film where I like a single from it and might make me want to see the film, might have seen the film. Today is our first request. Right, interesting. This is uh, for Martin, who wants to hear uh, Living in the City by um, uh, Stevie Wonder, Jeez. and it's from Jungle Fever. Let's hear it. Well, I, I love the song it's and I love the film. Classic. Living for the City. Genius. Stevie Wonder. The man's and a the god. film Jungle Fever. Absolutely. It's a great film. Yeah. Well, not to be confused with Living in the City, which I think is a Desiree track. <laughs> so <laughs> never know, because you're a huge but Desiree fan. We were grooving along to that. It's a great, not my favourite Stevie Wonder track. I, I actually, um, for, uh, he's Mr. Nettle. But right. a, a great track. Oh, oh. Stevie Wonder's just fantastic anyway. And during that, we just uh, heads down, we just like, you know, just enjoying the moment. We said, turn it up, didn't we? We like yeah. it. Carl, just halfway through, just halfway through, just looking at me. He, he, 
He's got a driving license. Yep. I went, what? He went, he's got a driving license. I went, as he went, yeah, just for his own land. I went, you don't need a driving license for your own land. He went, you might be right. He said, who else is blind? <laughs> <laughs> I remember hearing something. I, it, it was someone famous. Right. Who, who shouldn't have a driving license. Well, and they have. And I'm sure a it's lot of people. Someone who's, I'm sure it's someone who's blind. But you're right. It's a bit of an odd one. <laughs> it, isn't it? No, but don't, don't forget, don't forget, you haven't just, this hasn't just happened, this is in your head. So you can't say that and go, isn't that weird, how did that happen? It's in your head, don't forget, at the moment. There is no proof There's of There's no this. proof of that. You can't say something and they go, isn't that strange? You said it. Oh. Do you know what I mean? We didn't just see something happen out the window. No, no. Yeah, you know, do you see what I'm saying? What's in your head and what happened and all that? What are you thinking? I'm just thinking, who's that other fella? Um, Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Yeah. What, why would he have a driving licence? He's blind as well. I think it's the blind thing we've got a problem with. <laughs> that, that it's the idea of need... people who are blind driving cars that's maybe made us question yeah. that. I mean, Stevie may have a driving licence. I very much doubt that he's passed his test. No. He probably hasn't even- I mean, he could have done the theory one, maybe. But that's and touchscreen. And until Labradors actually are allowed on the Queen's Highway, exactly. I don't think we'll see many blind people driving well, I cars. I might be wrong. I'm you might be, might you? <laughs> oh, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm. You might be wrong. Could well be well, wrong. Well, there's a start. I fancy a bit of Ed Hardcore about now. <laughs> well, Rick, you've embarrassed yourself because his name's Hardcore. Hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just play the song, Carl. More part this time. Still to come, loads of our other features, of course, including Hip Hop Hooray. <laughs> Black Rebel Motorcycle Club and Love Burns XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. My name's Steve Merchant. Carl, what's your name? Press the buttons. That's it. Carl, I press the buttons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless him. He's people are loving the K-Man, aren't they? They are. Lo people are saying they love him. He's just, oh. He is. He's I think him. we've created a whole new Will McDonald. <laughs> I like to think so. Yeah. Carl! Or, or, or Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> I used to have a show in, in Manchester. Did, Did you? used to host a show? Yeah, overnight. What kind of things was it? What kind of stuff? What, sort of, what sort of tip do you want? Phone-ins and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You did a phone-in? Not a proper one. What did people phone in about? No, they didn't. That was all the problem. There was no phones. Go on. No, just, uh, you know, how things were going and that. Problems? Were you like an agony uncle? Uh, kind of. That's amazing. Imagine that. Imagine sending someone to Carl. You got problems? <laughs> Is it delicate? We'll go to Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Hang on, there's, looks like maybe there's some, uh, questions Oh, we've got, you know, we've got a few questions here. What's the one, um, what's Carl's view on... Carl, what do you make of nudism? Who's that from? Let me just check who that's from. Sort of, uh, a time and a place for it? That's from, uh... It's very difficult to that's tell That's great, see? There's, there's a time, time and a place for it. That is just brilliant, that is Dicky Bird, that's, that's that sort of northern, uh, confident soundbite. What do you think of nudism? What? Time and a place for it. <laughs> there's a time and a place for it. Would you do it, Steve? Would I do nudism? Yeah. He's not allowed. Not, not again. No, no. Yeah. It's not, not in, nice, is it, really? No, it's not, see, he, he's not allowed on uh, any National Trust land doing it because no. he's caused the death of millions of starlings. That's see, true. There was something on BBC Choice the other night, it's a really short show, I haven't seen it before. Um, yeah. like an odd it's not, thing. it's not a bloke eating copper soup and then another short show, like maybe someone cleaning their teeth with Colgate and then the really short show. What was it called? No, what it was, it was about, uh, this old fella who, um, he's into nudism. And, um, he was saying it, he's done alright out of it. Did he play volleyball it. a lot? <laughs> he said it, he's done alright out of it because there's not many blokes who, uh, mm -hmm. are willing to go nude for, for modelling and that. And he's yeah. about 70, so it's not... Is there much nice. cry for that, do you think? Is there much demand he's, for a 70 year old right. nude? He's doing alright for it. Sure. Good, And, um, good. the odd thing was, you see... He had a corkscrew penis. <laughs> he was, um... <laughs> He was just like walking around on the main road in like a seaside in the town. And right. yeah, and cars would- See that's not nudism is it? That's <laughs> mental illness. <laughs> yeah, he's just a bit d dear. Yeah. 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 So right. yeah, I tell you, one of your favourite programmes, isn't one of your favourite ones just that, that one with the hot air balloon? And it's just <laughs> yeah, you that day, It just yeah. goes, it's like oh, in you Sydney, love that. sometimes it's at a carnival. Your, your, his favourite um, program when he was little, he used to watch it for hours, was that little girl by a blackboard with two toys. Yeah. He used to love you that, didn't you? enjoyed that, didn't you? Right, listen. Here's something else I learned in the week, and we can use this if you want to give away the Incubus tickets. Go on. 
Uh, there's probably. Oh, I must have, there's some tickets to give away later. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what it's later. Go on. Who, 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 I don't know. Yeah. We're going to save it. It's a surprise. Okay. Go on, Carl. Oh, have I ruined it? No, go on. Crackle, right. mate. Crackle. Um, yeah. There was a pro program about the uh, the body. Sure. Um, and what what is it, right? Barbie doll. Why couldn't that be real? Yes. <laughs> Play a record, Carl. I, I do. I do know the answer. Actually, I have to say. What do you yeah, mean? Really? Why couldn't it be real? If if the Barbie doll was like a real person, right? It wouldn't work out. <laughs> I don't understand the question! If you do, this is what worries me. I don't understand no, the question. Why do you understand it? Because it's one of those facts which I've heard in the past, but, so therefore, because I know the answer, the question makes sense. But unless you, unless you know the answer, the question makes no sense. Well, of course it does. That's what's brilliant. Is it worth using for the tickets, do you think? Is it that good? It's not a real question, Carl. I don't it think is. it can count, really. It can't be a real right. question. Well, b because I, it's like one of those things about, oh, a man went into a field and died, why? You have to ask questions, you go, oh, because his parents didn't know, but well, I've got a million explanations. Um, okay, she'd be hollow. Do you know what I mean? There no, are a he's right, actually, there it is too vague. Why don't you give the answer and then you'll understand what, what your question meant. What was the answer? She'd have to walk around on all fours, because... I no, physically, the proportions of Barbie yeah. could yeah. not be replicated on a real human woman, because she just couldn't have those di dimensions. Yeah, we know. Yeah. But, but, but that, 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 you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. Same goes for Fred Flintstone. Do you know what I mean? His head's half his body. It's a cartoon. Alright. Um, Don't have a go at Carl. He's the k -man. People love him. Sorry. God, they're going to alienate yourself. I'd like some hip-hop, Steve, seriously. Just laying into I'd like some hip-hop, Steve. We'll come up with a question. We're giving away some Incubus tickets later. Look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, it's time for Hip-Hop Hooray! Uh, this is hip from, um... Hooray! <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. oh. Hey, this is from Adela Soul's uh, 2000 album, not sure. the current one, Art Official Intelligence, yeah. Mosaic Thump. Yeah, uh, they've people, changed a bit, haven't they? They have, and a lot of people have dismissed Adela Soul, but there's still some tracks you can dig out. Not a Jazzy, but this is a soul tip to this, this show, This is a wonderful it? track. Uh, this is With Me, play it, Carl. Alive. P.O.D. or P.O.D. <laughs> Absolutely. As I, as I call them. Yep. On XFM 104.9. A bit of rock. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl over there. Now listen, there's a bit of rock there. Yep. Takes into a competition. We've okay. got Incubus tickets to go Incubus, away. you say? Now, I like Incubus. Okay. I mean, for, for what they are, but, you know, I'm a bit worried about all this crossover, this new metal, and these people coming out that are a bit like Pearl Jam and a bit more oh, this sort of, oh, I'm not too sure about it, I'm okay. not, still not convinced, but Incubus have got a bit of style about them. Uh, well, you know the, um, the competition we just ran there, the phone in, ask Kyle and thing, people were phoning up, one person said, what do you think about new metal? Kyle just quick as fast went, I hate it. <laughs> exactly. And he threw a question right back at them and went, do you listen to that in the morning? She went, yeah, he went, wow, well, you see, in the morning I like Ash, in the evening, I might listen to, um, I think he said Magic, Magic FM. Yeah. Yeah. But I love the fact that he is now, we've, we've put him on a pedal, he's, he's, he's happy with his own opinions. Before he was like, mm, I don't know, and now he wants to tell the world. He'd be down at Hyde Park Corner tomorrow, wouldn't he? And they're going, right, who wants to know what I think <laughs> about, I don't know, uh... At two o'clock, I will listen <laughs> to the Human League. <laughs> Uh, today at 4.13, I had one apple and <laughs> listened <laughs> to Prime <laughs> Screen. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you're, you're great, bloke, Carl. We better stop now because, you yeah. know, we're going to make you into the new job. There'll, there'll be more from Carl next. So this is a very last question that someone, this is Jim, he's emailed in. He says, does Carl think that the wa that Waterworld, Mad Max, Judge Dredd, or similar films present an accurate portrayal of what a post-apocalyptic world <laughs> might be like? <laughs> How do you imagine what the world will be, Carl, when the, the, the bomb is gone? I have got no comment. You've okay, got no comment? okay, let's forget the films. What do you think the world might be like if there was, say, a nuclear war and we had to survive underground for a while till all the, um, you know, uh, uh, waste went away and we could come up and we could eat fruit again and, oh, there was, oh, it was all weird and we had to start from scratch? I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or right. you. Uh? Wouldn't you? Well, supposing it was sort of like, you know, Britain was just, uh, it was, all the buildings had gone, right? Oh, there was some, some bit of scavenging, there was like, and we hid underground and we came out, you know, sort of, in ten years' time. Don't keep shaking your head, you know, the question. You can go, no, 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 <laughs> rather die. <laughs> and it's fine, you lived on tin fruit for a few years, right? Then you had to come up and start again. You had to, and you had to find other civilizations. I'd want that thing that, um, is it, is it Walt Disney had? Sort of, 
cryogenically put me preserved. in a fridge thing and say, look, wake me up when it's all built again. Mm. I can't be doing with that, walking around yeah. with a hard hat on all day. Yeah, what would you do? Set an alarm clock? You're, you're <laughs> the only person, well, you get in a fridge and leave a note, if you find this, do not disturb till 2012. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, I, well, yeah, but so that wasn't, well, I mean, what would you do first? You'd just come out, right, come out, into the light, it was just like, it was like, you know, um, S Saxon Britain, there was nothing, you'd have to start again, what would you do? What would you do first? I'd probably go and see where I live now to see what's left of it. <laughs> I love how he thinks. <laughs> oh. Carl, if you, if you were the last man on earth, right, yeah. and you had to have one other woman with which to start the human race again, right, yeah. and not your girlfriend, who would you start the human race again with? Which person would you, oh. would you want to, bear in mind, it's not just like the fact that you've got to have kids, you've got to, they've got to be able to provide something in this and they, world, and they've got they to be might, leaders. And they might be all melted, and they, <laughs> exactly. they so their beauty they've, may have... they've just got one good eye, uh, but now they can tell what you're thinking, because <laughs> exactly. of radiation. <laughs> yeah. They, and, Who and, think, and, huh? they tried to go through a pod, and there was a, there was a fish in there for some reason, in their Wellington. Ooh. I mean, for me, probably... So what would you rather kiss, a mermaid or a unicorn? <laughs> Carl, quickly. Mermaid. Why? No, just, 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 no, I don't want him to answer my question. Because he's got a lady's face. Mm. Okay then, what would you rather kiss, a lady with um, the body of a fish or the body of a horse? A fish. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the best thing in the world. It's just like, you know when you call a file a rude word yeah. and then the computer goes, do you want to open tits? <laughs> yeah. You laugh, because it's like, that's what playing with Carl's Go like. On. It's sort of like you input it and it, you always get, you get, you know what I mean? You yeah. sort of get... You get more back than you bargain for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Probably only because, though, because I've seen films, that, that one with that Hannah Darrell or whatever her name is in, <laughs> and she looks yeah. all right. I've never seen Hannah a film Darryl, yeah. with a woman with a horse's body. Maybe if I've seen one, I'd, I might change my mind. If okay, could, right. can you email us a picture of a woman with a horse's body? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais at XFM. Or do they, do they exist? Anyway. Do, do you reckon unicorns exist, Carl? No. No. Look, let's play another song then, because I think we were going to give away some Incubus tickets. We seem to have got sidetracked. Okay. Um, we? Well, I'd like to play my song for the lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not ashamed of this. It's an early Bowie track. It, it's his his sort of you know version of soul. It's off the Young Americans album, and it's a beautiful song called "Can You Hear Me." David Bowie, at his best there, yeah. Young Americans, can you hear me? You, you said it when the record was on, Steve, you're not going to hear this sort of eclectic mix of music anywhere. Anywhere else, Rick. We go from hip-hop to soul, to hip-hop and soul, to soul type hip-hop. And then some soul hip hip-hop, hop-hop. Hip. And ash. And the joy of it is, Rick, that if people are open-minded enough and broad-minded enough, as yeah. I hope our listeners are, yeah. they're going to be loving this. And we played, we played early out and last We've week. We didn't care, Ty. We don't care what he's done since no. or what he's like now. We're not if his someone, reputation. I don't judge. I don't judge. You know what I mean? If I do a good track, Can then I tell you this let's now. play that track. I am not interested in what people think's cool. No, obviously. No, I'm interested in what people think is good, Rick. Yeah. Yeah, All yeah. right. No, I'm interested in what we think is good. I Steve. don't care about what women think is traditionally handsome. No, no. I play by my own rules. Yeah, exactly. You do, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. You're not in it for their amusement. I'm not in this game for anyone's amusement. No. Obviously right. not. Jeez, now, all these women with the, oh, you know, I want to be able to have a conversation. Yeah. I want to have, have, have an orgasm. <laughs> you know Hello. I mean? Yeah. Um, now, that was, uh, David Bowie there, uh, we've, uh, we've, we've played some great tracks here, but we've got more to come, haven't we? We have indeed, yes, plenty more to come, Rick, but we're gonna give those Incubus tickets we've away. We've got a competition, now, we were talking about, um, people keeping open mind, now our listeners have got open minds, they're, yep. they're, they're like, they're not only open, they're blank. Yeah. They're, you know what I mean, yeah, really? Empty canvases. From the empty ones that have been, yeah, <laughs> yeah, from the ones that have been phoning up, I yeah. don't know how are they dialed. No. I think they're wrong numbers or they sat on the phone or something. Sure. Um, and a lot of old listeners are coming back. A lot of people from the old days of XM, yeah. I don't know, uh, they've obviously been allowed out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally. Well, that's care in the community, Rick. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. now get thrown out of those homes so or I thought, detox centres. Yeah, I thought maybe an old question, something that I'd uh, explored three years ago, what four years ago. What excites me is the fact that, you know, clearly all those kind of needle exchanges mm -hmm. and things like that really helping people stay alive, and that's sure, a joy. Sure, sure, you know, that's, sure. that's evidence there on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what about this? Now, you know the answer to this, I've done this before. Okay. Right? 
There is one London station. Wait, we've done this in the last couple of weeks. Oh, you think I'm going to say St John's Wood? Yes. No. Okay. There is one London station that has no vowels. That has no vowels? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. You've not thought this no, through at all. It's one vowel. It's one vowel. It is one vowel. So oh, there's, there's one London station with one vowel? I can't remember the answer, though. <laughs> oh, no, this yeah. is pathetic. <laughs> This is so rubbish. <laughs> I so want to be on someone else's show. Like, Camfield would be good, or just on, like, Dr. Fox. <laughs> we like Dr. Fox now, Dr. don't Fox we? Dr. Fox, he's amazing. We like him. I li uh, he's come through on that pop star, pop star tonight. I love Fox. I like, I like his little trunk. He's like, a, he's like a little trunk. And he works out, and he's got a bike and everything, but I like him. He's got, he's optimistic. He wears too much blusher, and he's, I like his suits. But it's I the fact that he's, it's like, however hard he tries, he just doesn't look right on the telly. He just looks like a man who's been sewn into that suit. I know, I know. Can I tell you when I saw him once riding here into Capital, uh, on his hog, on his Harley. Oh, is that? It's such a yeah. joy. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, no, we like Foxy. What about Simon Cow? Oh. What about that Nicky Chapman? Like her. Yeah, what about the other, who's the other one? Oh, Waterman. Waterman. Up and down He's Waterman. a bit of a knob. Wow, come on, you can say that, but he's, no, he's, 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 he's sold millions of records. None of this talking- So is our price. None what? of this talking is disguising the fact that we've still not managed to give those incubators okay, away. Okay, 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 what Any about questions? this? What about this? What about this? You've got nothing, have you? No. You're running on empty. Yeah. Play a record. <laughs> there on XFM 104.9. Right, we've got a competition question. Steve's come up with it at the last minute. This is just to check if you are a regular listener of the show. Yeah, okay. we would like to reward loyalty. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, last week on the show, Ricky described a story that happened to him uh, back in the 80s when he was making his TV appearance on Razzmatazz with his band, and he tried to, he had to fly out, was it to Newcastle? Yeah. And um, he tried to get on a plane, and a pop act of the 80s tried to help Ricky sneak aboard an aeroplane. But failed. But they failed to do it. At the height of their powers. And they were at the height of their powers. What was the name of that outfit? Should we put them on the line? Absolutely, let's hear well, it. There's, there's the people there already. This is to win Incubus tickets. Please do not be mental. Don't be mental or swear or say anything libelous or nasty. Yeah. Just be nice. You won't, you won't win if you're not. Go on. Hello. Hello? Hi, who's that? Oh, I've got my headphones on, haven't I? Put your headphones on, Rick. I'll just oh. keep her talking. Oh, nice. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Okay, hello. Hi. hello there. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from? I'm Clapham Junction. And do you know the answer? I do. Okay. It, Fizz? it was indeed Bucks Fizz. It was the Fizz. <laughs> it was indeed the Fizz. Well, do then. you like Incubus? Um, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, you see, if I was interrogating you, <laughs> I, I, I'd go, well, you hesitated. Yeah. There's so many people phoning up who are desperate for these Incubus tickets. Please don't make they this are give them to you. No, no, to be fair, they're rightfully yours. Right, I'll you tell you what, why, I'll have a t-shirt if you give them the tickets. Okay, is that just any old t-shirt or... No, no. Can we, uh, can we send you a t-shirt? Carl's nodding. We right, think we can send you a t-shirt. Right, um, we'll get you a t-shirt. How, how, how are you going to do that then, Carl? Because you've got to take her name and everything now. Yeah. <laughs> this is pathetic. <laughs> this this is wouldn't amazing, happen with Dr. Fox, he'd have it all Foxy wouldn't yeah. do this. Can I, can I say as well, it's a bank, um, the train station with one vowel. Yeah, but there's loads on there, he hasn't thought it through. No. Bow as well, there's many. Listen, no. Carl, they yeah. can have a number. He can't have been that. I can't remember it, what was it? I remember I tried it the last time I tried this it. This is a shambles. And I couldn't work it out then, there was, there was wrong answers. I remember Aldwych came up, maybe right. it's Aldwych. What's, what? What's oh. Carl doing there? What? Who's he talking to? I think he's talking to her, but what? Say again? This, quick, let's think of something. Come hey, on. tell her, are you still on this line? No, she's, he's picked up the phone now. So what am I doing? Shit, we're giving away, we're, we're letting people behind the curtain. Let's keep up this veneer of professionalism. This is so rubbish. Come on, no, 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 no don't, okay. don't draw attention to it. Okay, alright. Uh, let's just talk and make So, uh, Steve, what, what, what are you doing tonight? You're looking forward to pop stars? <laughs> I'm looking forward to a lot. Who, Who do you want to win? I'm glad you've asked, Rick. Um, I'd love to see Darius have a bit of success, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think, uh, it's probably gonna be the stutterer. I think it is gonna be, um, Gareth. He has a name there, Steve. Um, <laughs> I think it's gonna be Gareth, yeah, apparently sure, in the sure. polls in the week he's getting twice and we're back, don't we? Okay. Alright, Carl, um, so, right, okay, so she's getting a t-shirt, is she? Lovely. Right, is we, who's, who's that on the line? Next contestant. Hello? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> An error. I, I mean, we couldn't do this worse. Come <laughs> on, hello? Hello. Hello, Hi. who's that? It's Dan. Dan, hello, Dan. Danny. 
All so, right, do mate. you want to go to Incubus? I'd love to, man. Okay. Hold on, this is pointless, because he's just heard the last... Uh, he's heard the answer. Yeah, definitely Buck Fizz. This is mad! We didn't think this through! No, but let's be honest, it, he wouldn't have been on the line if he didn't know the answer. Are you cheating? No. Dan. Dan, he said he's not cheating. For, uh, this is fail-safe. <laughs> That's fail-safe. This is a rigorous... <laughs> I can't Screw believe this. Uh, Dan, you're going to Incubus. Oh, uh, cheers, man. Well That's done. Blinded. Well done. Oh. Last one. Thanks cheers. for listening. Cheers. Oh. Carl, what do we have to do? Do we just hang up, or what happens? No, you play a song and... Play a song, then. You've oh. got his details. Yeah. Oh, play it. Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. Fever, just today. That reminds me of this Christmas where my 51-year-old brother wouldn't let anyone near the PlayStation 2 because he was playing Gran Turismo. And he has to build his car up and buy it. He just played it from about six o'clock till sort of three in the morning. Was it but bought for him or about three? Uh, I, d I don't know, but the, we, we had to watch him. <laughs> 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 Why that song particularly? Uh, Why it's on. It's on it. Oh, it's it's the, it's I think I think feed a feature all over it, don't they? On the right, on the, right, on the right. soundtrack, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was on the tube the other day, Rick. So oh. I was just coming into Finsbury, uh, Finchley Road. Yeah. And uh, I was on the train. I, 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 I know you don't travel on the tube anymore. No. You, too famous, but um, I, I never did. No, no. Fair it's, it's not that I don't really recognise. It's it's beneath me. <laughs> fair enough. And um, <clears throat> and they're on, on the tube in the each carriage on these newer ones. There are kind of these uh, flaps that are normally locked closed. And there was one of them that's swinging open. And inside there were various buttons like on off, you know, self destruct, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. But it's like doors operating. Train but, quicker. Exactly. <laughs> and you were thinking like you don't want some you know kind of oik. Sort no. of fiddling around, pressing buttons and stuff, it could be quite dangerous. Yeah. So I got off a feature and I thought, oh, I'll be a good commuter, I'll mention this to the staff, and, and they'll probably, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll thank me for it. And if it's an attractive young staff member, you know, I mean, they never are on the tube. Have you ever seen an attractive member of staff at a tube station? Oh, come on, steady. They are then. such freaks. I no, mean, I know that's the pot kettle they're all, black thing, They're all from Devon, apparently. They're grotesque people, really. Alright, oh, steady on. And uh, so anyway, I went up to this guy, I thought... The okay, uniforms don't out though, do they? They don't, it's pretty grim. And so yeah. I went up to this guy, I said to him, excuse me, I was just on the train there, and um, there was a flap open, I could see all these buttons and things. He went, right. I was like, yeah, well, I just think, you know, it might be, you know, you know wandering hands, a small child or something. Yeah. Right. A small yeah. child? He went, he went, what carriage was it? I said, well, I don't really know what carriage it was. I just, maybe the next stop, someone should come and check. He went, well, how are they going to check if they know what carriage it's in? <laughs> <laughs> and it's at fine. that point, I just thought, I just wanted to smack him in the face. I just thought, I, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got no reason. There's no gain for me about telling this. It's not going to help me out in any way, not financially, nothing. I'm I just know. trying to help you out, and that's your attitude. I was absolutely I know. Livid. I'm getting so intolerant in my I old age. I won't. I can't uh, uh, stand bad, it. Bad service, bad attitude, just, uh, oh, it drives me mad. It makes my blood boil, and I, oh. Livid. I was one time, right, I was down in the centre of town. This was after some of the big explosions, the IRA, had, you know, various things. And everyone was on kind of bomb alert, very nervous, very scared. And uh, there was a, a, a sort of a bag in the street, you know, this was the centre of London or whatever, and, and my friends and I were a bit edgy, but a bit nervous. And we're outside this pub and we saw the bag and we thought, well, maybe we should sort of tell, we'll tell the landlord and that. So we told the landlord, right, and he, he came out and he looked at it and he thought, oh, you're right, lad, it does look a bit shifty. Um, and this is what he did, this was his security measure, right, <laughs> he was going to call the police, but in the meantime, he picked up one of those sandwich boards that advertises what food's being served in the pub, just placed it over the top of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's failsafe. That is what the bomb disposal unit use <laughs> exactly. very often. That like, you see them uh, up and down Oxford Street. They're they're not people, sell, um, you know, selling stuff. Sure, that's just they're they will leap on a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I love the idea because what we did was we moved about a hundred yards down the road because we thought if the bomb goes off, we want to see it. That'll be dramatic. Yeah, we don't want to get <laughs> yeah. you know, injured. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of like a, s a sandwich board flying off into the air, <laughs> and just embedding itself in someone's head. Yeah, well, no yeah. one would have been injured. Who do I sue? That sandwich board. Well, that was that was Ron, the landlord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My God, is that? Is that is that a Cumberland pie for five ninety five? I can't believe my luck. <laughs> John, I think that's something more serious. A... Anyway, I'm... <laughs> paramedics going. I can't believe ninety nine pie. It's pretty. I'm going to come back here. <laughs> so anyway, so listen. He calls the police, right? And so after a while, about you know, it's like forty minutes later, and I think the police do a good job. I'm not trying to break down on the police. I think it's a, it's a good job, and I I respect the police. But um, this, this police van turns up after about forty minutes of waiting, right? And this this guy leaps out of the van, and he goes, "What? You're the guys who reported this, are you?" And we went, "Yeah." He went, "Right." And he looked at the bag, and he picked it up, he unzipped it, and there was just some rubbish in there. And he just, and he just looked, he just threw it at us, he went, there's your bomb for you, and threw it at us, to teach us a lesson, and then got in the van and drove off. And it was like, uh, oh, what, what lesson are you teaching us about what being you do? consistent? You, you presumably reported him, do you? Well, of course we're not, what's going to happen, you know, it's not... Do you know what I think? 
I think he thought it was a bomb, right. and he was trying to blow you up to teach yeah. you a lesson. <laughs> well, possibly. That's I bad. Just, that is just, really bad. It just winds me right up, stuff like Once, that. Once, right? Uh, <laughs> me and Bill, where we had sort of, it was like 1983, and we had like extensions and um, cut off t shirts and jeans and uh, sexy. Uh, yeah, you know, like make it all new. And we were just eating chips on the corner, right? And this, it was a Saturday, so I assume it was like, um, um, <laughs> football patrol, about 12 police, and they sort of slowed down, looked at us, and he wound the window down, and the bloke driving shouted, you look like a couple of prats. <laughs> Bill turned to me and went, is that an offence? <laughs> and I remember <laughs> wanting to laugh at the joke, but thinking, that's annoying. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> that is an They were right. It's not really a police issue, I don't yeah. think. Someone called into uh, HQ that morning. <laughs> like, you've seen anyone looks a bit, uh, you know, the fashion <laughs> police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, we've heard a bit, there's a bit of a, uh, a to do. Apparently, a couple of prats are walking round. Yeah. Uh, uh, we need someone to go on fashion police <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Send in Lawrence Llewellyn and Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But, you know, we, we respect the police. Yeah, We're not no, I'm not having a go. It's just those few that give them a no. bad name, really. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, for it. hey, I think the boys in blue do a good job. <laughs> And do the farming. Yeah, farm do especially well. farming. I remember once, this is really embarrassing, this is the arrogance of youth, right? In a, in a hall of residence, every time someone did toast, the fire alarms went off. I remember once it was like two in the morning and we all had to go outside and it was just toast set off things, but it, it was linked. And about eight fire engines turned up and I, I, they're all coming in, right? And I said, oh, this is so embarrassing, why am I telling this? Go on. I just went, there's enough of you. God! And the fireman quite well said, he just went, shut your mouth, mate. Yeah. And I thought, oh, God, he's right. He's one of those you remember ten years later. Yeah, going, that's a horrible thing. What a tw I know, but I, I when you're 18... I want to publicly apologise oh, to the fireman. Oh, I'm so sorry. Man. I'm so sorry. Because I, I never did oh, stuff like that. Oh, that is twice. I was too busy saying, can I try on your helmet? <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, we better play another yeah, song, haven't we? Oh, this is, uh, um... A Great track. This is uh, Groove Armada. It's from uh, the album Goodbye Country, Hello Nightclub. It's the opening track. It's all called uh, Sun Touch. I think you'll like this, Steve. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Groove Armada there. And Sun Toucher. Did you like that? I didn't mind that. I didn't realise you were a uh, Groove Armada dance music fan. Well, no, Jane played that music. I've never heard that before, but I loved it immediately. Mm. I, I, oh, it's great. It's like a yeah. soundtrack mixed with a little bit of sure, sure. hip hop and oh, it's all it's all like a big, all a big like mix. A big isn't melting it? pot. Yeah, yeah. I just wish that's what the world was. Really, so where we could so just so so yeah, everyone yeah. could live in harmony. I wish it was an onion. Oh, if only the world were a great big onion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, maybe one day. Well, this is nearly the end of the show. It's, uh, it's been uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with Carl. And uh, it's been a great show. And, uh, you know, I've just uh, there's been some laughter, there's been some tears, there's, there's been, been some jokes, jokes. There's been some political satire. <laughs> I'd like to think so. But above all, there's been some chat with friends. <laughs> and there's been some bloody great music. Let's not forget that. I don't think we need to swear <laughs> at this time. <laughs> it's play juncture. Yeah. Um, because you make yourself look a cock, <laughs> and me look a twat, <laughs> and true. Carl look like a complete <laughs> song for ladies. Um, rarely do you get a chance to play on a radio station seven, min wanker. <laughs> seven minutes worth of Led Zeppelin, but screw it, I thought that, hey. you know, it's the end of the show, we don't give a damn, it's Be an amazing song. Be careful with the language, <laughs> screw damn and bloody, <laughs> do not a sermon make. <laughs> Rick, hey, it's yeah, a beautiful yeah, song, yeah. if you're not a Zeppelin fan, stick with it's it, it's not roaring rock as you'd expect, the rain song from Houses of the Holy, oh. see you next time. See you later.